Howdy, folks. Welcome to Adventures in All Brawn Courts of Everest. I am Joe Treff, your DM this evening and most, and joining me are my friends, Matt. Whoops, I, I didn't press the thing. Matt Holmes, <laughs> Kara, Anna, and Alana. Um, oh, Tina is not with us because she had a child. Yeah, finish the Tina. sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but it wouldn't be, it, it's appropriate for Tina to do like the pause because yeah. she had a child. <laughs> there needs to be some suspense. But Tina will Tina's be joining us again us. relatively soon. Um, a couple of quick announcements before we get to D and D, because we were all talking right before. I haven't opened my notes yet, but um, we got them. <laughs> we are at Albron RPG on Instagram, on YouTube. You can see all the different stuff that we have on our table in much closer detail at Albron RPG. You can see some minis. There are actually some starships left over from Starfinder. Yes, yeah, look at that. Those are our, our D and D spaceships. Um, but yeah, Get at all on RPG, here. you can see more of that kind of stuff. Yeah. We have handouts, we have all kinds of different things, and uh, they're really cool to see. We also played Starfinder last night, Thursday. <clears throat> last night, Thursday. Last night, Thursday. Last night, Thursday. <laughs> uh, it occurred at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> last night, Thursday. I'm it occurred having, at 6.30. Having, it's been a long week. It's been a really long week. It's been a okay. long Thursday. It has been a long <laughs> Man, we're on Somehow hour, hour Thursday. 40 of Thursday. Oh, no. Um, uh. We have cool tarot card banners that are coming uh, because of uh, Sophie Bischoff, who is really close to finishing Alina's, which is so cool because we got to see the line art for it this morning. And then Ori is going to be next and then uh, so on and so forth. We rolled for initiative for it kind of. And so, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had you guys roll it. Oh, I don't know if I told you that, but I had you guys randomly roll a D20 and oh, or it was a D100. It was a D100. And it was whoever was closest to 27 was the number that I had. And so oh. I pulled oh, so just so you guys know, that's why I told you. Wow. Oh, Sometimes I, I just I like that. that I have you guys roll random dice enough that you just don't ask what they're for. Well, I guess yeah. in the moment I was like, oh, I guess we're getting. I something. thought it was going to be was, some but sort then of hag shit. Around, it was right when it. Ori came across the hag, so I was right, like, right. I guess this is our fate. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, oh, hag shit. I had forgotten <laughs> how I had determined that. Yeah. 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 Anyways, Ori is going to have a, a card coming next, and once we have all those finished, or actually as we gonna finish them, we're going to get those made as banners, similar to the ones that you see behind the players on Thursday night. So we're going to have those cool kind of backdrops. And then finally, um, da, 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 next month, uh, the week of April 19th, we're going to be celebrating Arbor Day. Uh, and then the, I think May, May is after April. May yeah. is after April. <laughs> so after that, in May, uh, we're going to have a Kentucky Derby adjacent theme week. So those things are going to be things that are coming up. We also have a couple of one shots that are coming up. One of them is set in canon to our original first edition campaign. It follows some of the happenings in Brenna's world uh, after the events of campaign one. And then Olive is going to be running a one shot for us at some point. There's some details emerging about that. And it's going to be very interesting. <clears throat> and so those are things that you can see at Alberon RPG coming in the future. Thank you for all your support and for making it possible. And it's time for tonight's session of Adventures in Alberon Courts of Everest. Wandering Hearts, last we played. You had a crab boil on the shores of Lake Tarkana, regaling the fishers that you had rescued from the Blood Pearl Oyster attack, or perhaps more from Minka, with the tale of you vanquishing the Ina Kamudi. You learned that this group was catching food to be brought to Petrichor to serve at Lord Artasis's eulogy tournament, which uh, you have all been coining the Battle of the Bards. The group offered to bring you across the shore of the lake, allowing you to bypass the unpleasant shot Rotwick Snoll, and instead allowing you to land within the shadow of the Tower of the Crimson Mage. 
here, the experiments in the tower above had created an area where a regional effect known as the fray occurred. It is almost the inverse of wild magic that can cause uncontrolled surges of arcane energy to create side effects when spells are cast. You were mostly alone across this journey, but did find yourself feeling watched. And in typical form, Billy, you called out to the darkness. <laughs> and somehow, every time that you do that, it is the appropriate time to do so. There was an individual trying to follow you and assess whether or not you were worth trading with. An individual who emerged from the woods, uh, Ermichael Duzit. That's... There it is. There it is. A very, very <laughs> the ugly only thing you wrote down rock gnome with a bulging <laughs> eye, uh, missing a good amount of their hair. They were relatively unpleasant, no nonsense, and would deal only with Alina and Cheshire. Yeah. And they managed to acquire a number of potions, including some potions of health. You then all pushed on and came across something incredibly unexpected. <clears throat> a rock. No, not just a rock. This no, rock was a rock. Just just a rock. In that, it was not a rock. It was only a rock. There was no type to it. There was no uh, more specific information. And even Minka, an expert in such things, unable to determine any more information about this rock. Deep this rock also appeared to have been dropped, though there was no clear source overhead, no overhanging ledge. You spent a long time considering the stone. That but eventually defeated the concept of it, walked around it, and as you begin to wrap up and toward where the Blue Bolt Coastal Roadway twists up and towards Darkbriar, that is where we begin this evening, having defeated the rock. Fucking rock. Oh, it's still right there. It is. We could turn back. You could. <laughs> well, I want to get more also, in on it. it. It was heavily implied to us, I forget, either on or off air, that we had missed a puzzle in that area. Um... The puzzle was that it is just a rock, but that is interesting. I don't know. We didn't check out any of the buildings. We didn't like. You did check out the building. Oh, we no. Or you looked at a building from like afar. But I looked across the street. Yeah. I said, we oh, examined the, the area. <laughs> but then the rock was just too. I was drawn to it. it as one. Well. So at the moment, it is the first of summertime, about four thirty in the afternoon. It is a Tuesday. It's about 75 degrees, and as far as it gets in Everest, it's pretty clear out. Um, if... What time is it? 4.30. Yeah, 4.35 p.m. if you really want. Huh? First of high sun? Yeah, for, first of high summer. High summer, yeah, there we, we go. Entered. It's a new month. It is a new month. Yeah. You are all making your way through a region that is known as the Blossom Fall Valley. And this is a place that really kind of lies in the shadow of this tower overhead and the mountain that supports it. And so almost everything in terms of plant life has kind of died back. There are little yellow bits of grass and moss here and there. And everywhere around you still, there are these kind of brittle falling petal blossoms that hit the ground and then eventually dissipate into the dirt below. Um, are you just going to continue to head north? So does it seem Ori's been leading us so far, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or make a perception check. Are you just gonna Can he have advantage because he's from here? Oh no. Does he get his thing? <laughs> he doesn't get better at seeing because he's from here. <laughs> I don't know. Six, which is also my passive <laughs> perception. No. <laughs> no. It hasn't changed. No. <laughs> oh man, that's too bad. You just leveled up. Okay. Wait. Did we level up to? No. <laughs> oh, Star Party. Uh, uh, so, uh, as circle. you make your way through this place, you know, Ori, being from this this area, that you are heading north, and bringing you maybe another two hours will we'll bring you right to the Blue Boat Coastal Roadway. You've heard of these suits of armor, but you haven't seen any sign of them. And as you make your way across, you don't see anything that really hints at them. Um, you would pass maybe signs of people coming by. People do use this road. I think you've passed a few at this point. But... With a 26, there is not a whole lot that is on the horizon outside of just smaller animals. You do see things like squirrels and uh, in the distance, maybe some slightly larger rodents on trees. But it's a pretty peaceful walk. Is there anything that you are all doing before you reach this roadway, which you're kind of like beginning to see in the distance? And it's it's relatively pronounced because this has these uh, polygonal blocks of this 
Um, Minka would know it's some kind of like a uh, balsitic lava uh, that has been shaped into pavers. And it's not a full road anymore. Parts of it have been worn away, but it's a very well-built road um, <laughs> for Everest. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you're, you're beginning to see signs of the stone change a little bit from sand to a little bit more like blocks of stone and dirt and grass. Um, and with your check, I would say, Ori, as you're getting closer to the road, maybe another, it's still like a little bit beyond a hill and a little bit over, but maybe a thousand feet away, you can see a little bit of smoke and the tops of what looks like maybe a watchtower. Mm -hmm. And you do know that there are watchtowers. This is a guarded road. And that's why people take it. Um, is it likely to be Amber Sworn, given what we know, or a mixture of, are we still within the realm of the tower? You're within the realm of the tower, but the Blue Bolt uh, Coastal Roadway falls within the um, sort of auspices of the Starkbite Tower. <laughs> and okay. so you have sort of a 50-50 shot when you last were here of Starkbite soldiers, warriors, really, because they don't have a standing army, or Amber Sword. Hmm. Are, are we... So in the area where the rock was, um, Alina, like, intuited that we were in the... Uh, the the wild magic. What's it called again? The wild magic. Like the fray. Air. Thank you. The fray. Yeah. I, was, I wanted to say phase. It's not that. Um, <laughs> we were in a phase. Can I? Uh, are we like still in the fray? As far as I can tell. <clears throat> yeah, I would say you have a pretty good sense that as long as these little blossoms are falling around you, that is kind of what is determining where these are in terms of visual effects. Okay. Yeah. Um. Is the road becoming like, uh, so like it's a road that we could use our carriage on, but correct. Oh yeah, absolutely. Bringing out the carriage would require things. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Now where that tower is, that's roughly in the area where you're going to start emerging from the shadow. That's why you can see the smoke. It's not yeah. kind of uh, hidden by that. Okay. So you would imagine once you get to that point, you could take the carriage out. I mean, okay. you could take it out now too. Right, but it would be yeah. A little cramped and tough. Yeah. Um, we So we're not in a, a situation where we would be visible right now, right? Because I don't know necessarily if we want to be on the road, but if we're staying off it, it's a little more suspicious if we get caught. You haven't made stealth checks yet? You're not, like, hiding? You're not in a... You're not well, walking like, around I've like a... I've seen the smoke, but I haven't seen people. Correct. And they presumably haven't seen us because we're still within like Correct. a tree line. Yes, and there's this kind of hill the, that's the blocking hill. the rest yeah. of the tower. So as far as you know, yeah, you're you. Nobody has shouted anything at you. There's no arrows coming down. Okay. Um, Ori, are you worried about being recognized? Well, typically it would be uh, Amber Swan or Stark by manning the towers, or as close to manning as you would consider. Stock by soldiers. And you're avoiding uh, both those forces, correct? Well, given what we've gathered, it seems as if the Ember Swan are not someone that we should be uh, involving ourselves with quite at the moment. Uh, and the Stark Bites, um, I forget if Alina knows that, but knows that you found like Stark Bite stuff with um, bad guy before. <laughs> The word fighting is just not there. <laughs> Dietrich. Um, I forget whether mm -hmm. the rest of us know that. And also more recently too, right? You did. At the hags, but I don't think anyone else saw that. Either. I don't think you've told explicitly anybody that. I don't think you've hidden it necessarily, no. but I don't think you've said it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, so we're not likely to run into anyone who knows you, but I mean, you've got that staff. Isn't that staff kind of like... A symbol of uh, mediocrity. Keep it wrapped up, though. Okay. How recognizable is your face to these people? Like, were they you have on posters? wanted posters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you like on site? I don't. Or... Well, it wouldn't be with the Amber Swan necessarily. Okay. It's more that just they are uh, a more militaristic presence than is typical of this area. Okay. Uh, Do um... we need to have like a, a secret name for you? No, no, this is... Uh, no. Um, How about Vori? 
that's very <laughs> All right. That's I'll we go, Bori. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, okay. I mean, if you do decide that you don't want your face to be out there, I, I have I some. Will, I have some. I, I bomb intend disguise to make myself magic. as relatively scarce as possible, uh, but I, I think we should all be wary of the Amber Swan. Right. We so, will encounter them eventually. Just it's right. just a matter. The question of is, how... do we encounter them right now as we approach this uh, presumably well fortified tower? Maybe we should have a, a cover main story. Coastal road, yeah, or... maybe. Well, we kind of do. I mean, we are um, like justiciers, right? And Would that we heard help about sway in the, this area? the mines with the or with the amber sworn or stark. <clears throat> That's kind of what when I'm you thinking. last left. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the you the mediocracy is a little stuffy. And so nobody likes authority being thrown around, despite the fact that everybody throws authority around. Mm -hmm. um, and because so it's not their authority. coming it's in cash. as non mediocracy members and doing that would it would ruffle feathers, like, but you would get listened to to an extent. You would probably make enemies very quickly. Right. So should we do that or should we come up with a different reason why we're on the road? Mm. We could just tell them that we're here to visit one of our group's hometown. Mm -hmm. Also true. I don't uh, see any issues that some guards would have with that. Traveling bards on their way up. What? Oh, Maybe. I can't play anything. You could. You, I think it's more like, why are we going north? <laughs> right, because then you want to be traveling. Bar I have my hand drum. Well, I think that I'm really good at playing it. Well, Nobody knows. <laughs> what if we're just travelers to see the Beetle Train? Don't ask her to play the hand drum. That's pretty famous. That's fun. Too. Whatever, I'm proficient. It gets intense. I would love we to would hear you play the hand drum. a bit drum. of suspicion <laughs> as a group. Uh, no offense to any of you, just a bit ragtag. Which is why I suggested Bot. For what it's worth, the Beetle Train is the next stop on the Blue Belt Coastal Roadway. Um, so that would kind of make sense in terms of a cover. Oh, it okay. also does, in ways, make a lot of sense if you want to travel across that path. Huh? <clears throat> um, the Beetle Blue Belt Coastal the well, I don't know how much any of you really know about the train proper. Um, you've Can seen it from a distance. Into it. <laughs> make a make a history check. Ah, oh. a beetle train. <laughs> train that well, is beetle. I did. They're expanding it. I remember that we. Yes. Were, I, I learned that. You did. Yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> and so you know, however. Ooh. <laughs> you wasting those good rolls early. Yeah, but that's a twenty-two. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Thank you know, no what waste is waste. Beetle train. Is yeah, like beetle train. <laughs> Don't you want to ride the beetle train? I really do. I've been waiting for this opportunity. I know. Save. <laughs> so the Beetle Train is a mass transit system, and it runs along a pair of tracks um, that are roughly kind of northern and southern bound. Uh, they are seared by these creatures that are known as Thunder Beetles. Um, more important to your kind of query, you know that South Sentinel Station though it would be the one that you are closest to. Um, and you would be able to make your way eventually to Darkbriar, um, almost directly there. And then if you wanted to go a little bit further northwest, it does eventually wrap to a place called Shadow Guard Castle, um, which is sort of a place that is set to overlook the Dome of Alandar. And that's south? That's north. North. A little bit northwest. North, north of sorry. Darkbriar? Correct. Northeast of Darkbriar. So closer to the Dome. So it's the next stop after Tower the Darkbriar stop. Last stop. Last stop. Okay. Tower of what? Um, what was the, what was the tower? tower's name again that you just mentioned? I, I didn't. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the uh, castle? The last stop, Shadow Oh, the Guard. castle. Shadow, Shadow, Guard. Uh, Shadow Guard Castle. Yeah, Shadow Guard. I don't know that it's on there. It may. I, I can't remember if I put it on that map or not. Does not. I think it was. <laughs> it it would be just a little bit northwest of where Darkbriar is in the mountains proper, overlooking the Dome of Alandor. Oh, maybe just it was a just little bit southeast of, one. or sorry, southwest of uh, the valley where it's Whisper, Whispers die. Here. Yeah, yeah, it would be around here in this like uh, bay area. Because okay. it's the Tower of Amber the Wings is like yeah. north. Of where the Don't actual train, <laughs> where the actual train on the map is pictured, it does wrap right through where the uh, actual stations go. Yeah, so it would end up like in the mountains there. In, over them there mountains, <laughs> over so, them there hills. So is the train a tourist attraction? It's not a tourist attraction. It's 
it's not cheap to travel for most people. For you, it wouldn't be terribly expensive, but for most people, it's not super cheap. There are cheaper ways in which you can go. It's safe. That's the big draw to it is that you're not traveling through like roads and stuff like that. It's relatively safe. At least it was mostly until dragons reemerged into the world. And there have been some dicey situations since. That's crazy. However, um. <laughs> the Dynasty of Thunder, the group that really is responsible for um, running this, it's a group of families that sort of keep amongst themselves the secrets of raising these creatures. Uh, they keep the line relatively safe. And depending on which station and which area, it falls to different families to, to kind of have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Typically, um, it's either the two dwarven clans, Shatter Sky or Godhammer. Mm. Okay. So, okay, so we're going north mm -hmm. to take the beetle train to see one, in our, one of our party's family. Well, actually, now that I think about it, it mm -hmm. may be beneficial to actually take the beetle train oh so we won't even have to lie that's amazing it would take us very close to darkbriar but uh, i've never seen it up close it's also likely that they would be doing uh inspections uh, it's the next stop but what would they be inspecting for uh, given the uh amber swan's increased presence i would imagine that they would be uh Protecting the rails, uh, or the the train itself. I don't think uh, I have anything. <laughs> Make sure I to just, just empty all the stones out of your pockets. So I, I suppose <laughs> we would. <laughs> How much would it cost to get a private no. car in the Beetle Train for? If seven? I mean, so if you could get a private car, there's right. not a ton of cars. It's not like a huge, huge for train. seven, right? Because I am not forgetting Finn. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, presumably Cheshire is just yeah, uh, will Cheshire. want to ride the train with us. <laughs> okay. So if you want to take the train, second, it is, I believe it's just a gold to stop. Give me one second to oh. make oh. sure I'm not. That's, well, a gold is a lot for somebody who is not like, you know, true. hauling not money an adventure. And for, like a, for somebody for a private uh, car, though, funded by Daddy Hearsome, I think That's it's like, probably fine. For some people who only well, have nine gold to their the name. Right. And so oh, the Beatles car that I layout is... Uh, what it really feels better. I've got plenty, I'll spot you off. So you have a uh, you have the driving car. You have a caboose, which is kind of where all of the um, Beatles who are not like working at that time are resting. <laughs> There is a car that is controlled by the actual, like, uh, dwarves who typically are the crew. There is something called the needs car, which is usually bathrooms, but a couple of other things. The bathrooms themselves use what are called prestidigit basins, uh, which <laughs> allow them to clean their hands while in transit. Prestidigit basins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are typically two passenger cars and then what is called the Arcana class car. And an Arcana class car is first class. And that is what you would be able to charter as a as a car. That would be 150 gold. <laughs> we can just per station. Per station. Norm. And dark buyer per person per station. Arcana class. Yeah, different per, two different words. Per is, person per station, funny. or just for the car. <laughs> for the car. Um, is the train definitely faster than the coach? Well, yes, taking the certainly. coach. T oh, taking yes. the coach out anyway is not a good idea because she gestures to the like so... well not right now but also the armor <laughs> so how often do you think you would be able to call here some and to request a favor is it too soon after the most recent didn't we just do that right and, and stuff's I know that... gonna be waiting for us i don't think he can get us like items in the middle of what do you what, what's the favor uh, reservation on the beetle train. Well, we can just get a regular seat. Wouldn't it be more suspicious if we just dropped a whole bunch of money out of nowhere? But if he some did. Does he have sway here? Also, didn't you just say He's, that people uh, don't like it around here when you when you uh, reserving your... a car is not uh, the same as I don't well claiming justiciaship. I agree that if we're trying to fly under the radar, dropping 150 gold, or outwardly being like, "Oh, we're here some people," I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we have five, six, seven, seven, 
We have five gold. One of you. We have. Se- I have. Se- yes, what I is- have seven gold. It's on me. It's my treat. Uh, I mean, if we can scrounge up the other hundred forty-three, then we don't need to hear some. That's a lie. If I can, maybe voice hear some for a second. Valis, <laughs> why don't you just ride in the regular seats with the regular people? Why do we need our own? That was a pretty good hearsay. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> more so to avoid Very more um, potential for interacting with Amber Swan or other uh, rabble that we may not want to encounter. How long is the ride? He would like, understand rabble. Is it? Right? Is it days? Yeah, how how long are we talking? It would be like what, a day? Day and a half. Day and a half. Maybe two days if like I mean a day and a half with the weather that is. About a day and a half if nothing happens. That's a long time to just be sitting around with But other other otherwise it's like, you know, like four days days to (laughs) yeah. It cuts our time down significantly. It's a day and a half when the day and a half by Beetle. Oh, okay, I see. Um, or four days by coach. Four days by coach. Is it just one by train? That we so if the train's it's not several trains that run trains. on this kind of north southbound rail. Almost, you could think of it a little four bit like a ski lift. Feet. And so they ah, okay. they they run in like a pretty consistent regular pattern. And so when you get there, you're never going to be waiting super long, as <laughs> long as yeah, as long as there's no problems at the station, you're pretty fine to get on. Why? Why don't okay, we well, get closer and see what it looks like? Maybe there'll be almost no one on our particular train, and it'll be fine, and we can just be alone. I guess if things are going poorly up there, it would be... I guess I don't understand why having our own private coach would help us. To be fair, we also don't know if we can even use the Beetle train to get to Darkbriar. We don't know if it's, like, locked down or anything. We don't really know much. Another reason why I figured that Hearson might be able to find out more if he tried to reserve a car for us. I don't think there's any harm in contacting him. I mean, he he never really denies us things that we need. How far are we until we get to where the Beetle train stop is? Well, like a couple, like two hours? So, yeah, a couple hours. You're, you're going to come to this watchtower pretty soon, so if you guys are walking and talking, mm-hmm. it's only about like 120 feet away, and you're starting to see like there's a structure, mm-hmm. there's definitely people there, you can hear voices, so it's a man tower. I don't want to walk close enough that we would be uh, seen by them okay. or heard. So you kind of pause a little bit out of sight as far as you can tell. Yeah. Is there a way to kind of, like, are there woods and stuff that we could Before see? Before we yeah. decide oh, yeah. what we do. Absolutely. If you want, you can just kind of get off the road and make your way around. No problem. Get off the road. Yeah. Yeah. When you said man tower, I just pictured a bunch of people standing on top of each other. That's also what I <laughs> That's around the corner. <laughs> Human ba, tower. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Um, Bricks are so expensive, sir. Human life is so cheap in the mediocrity. <laughs> well, okay, why don't we focus on getting around the tower and then and then reassess? Do we, are we supposed to have like something with us to go past it? We wouldn't thing? need anything to go because we're not going in. We're just going past, right? Yeah. So I mean, if you walk like, past, they might ask you, you know, what you're doing. Doing like it, a toll or something. Th- no, there's no toll. Yeah. They'll, they'll, and the real function of this is to keep people safe. Like, yeah. so the whole idea here is with things like roaming hollow suits of armor mm-hmm. yeah. and bandits here in the mediocracy are not like the bandits that you guys have fought. Almost everybody has magic here, and so they're a little bit more dangerous. We can't convince if them I no might. fishers. You might. I mean, you guys, you've created a little commune in Nipple's Hut, so who knows? But the um, the more important thing to keep in mind is they're not here to collect tolls. They're here mm-hmm. to keep you guys safe, in theory. The other thing is they oftentimes are good places to exchange news, to learn information about the region. So there are pros and cons to going by one. If I, guess. I might suggest an alternative to traveling bards and a group traveling together who does not look like they should be traveling together... There are roaming suits of armor, and if you cast a spell, weird magic shit happens to you. That's kind of dangerous. We all happen to be heading towards the beetle train. We all wish to take the beetle train. And we thought, it's a good idea to travel together. Safety in numbers. 
That's simple Trio? enough. It I is feel like simple. that. That means we can't I we can't like... use the hearsome card if we need it. Which is probably also better if they don't like it. Yeah, I don't think we should use that one. Okay. Unless why don't we just like incredibly that. necessary? If we say that, they'll just ask each of us why we're headed there. If we're uh, if not they ask that, then the same uh, band. Just... I think we should just tell them that we are just a van- a band of adventures. Yeah. I mean, adventuring right. parties are so a thing I, in this yeah, universe. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> and, and, it's not that weird. Very much. So. I don't understand why <laughs> we seem so off mm. to to the two of you. Yeah. Uh, Opposed to any other band of people. We're not wanted. That we well. Right. <laughs> are we? Are we wanted? Finn, are we no. wanted? But Finn kind of looks back and forth at all of you and says, well, I'm not wanted in Everest. Um, but, but, I mean, okay. I, I just met you guys. I guess there was a dog before. Yeah. yeah but okay, if anybody's so wanted, phones. you have to say you so have now. You, you. you have to say if you're a cop <laughs> or if you're wanted. <laughs> Ori? I'm not wanted. I can uh, vouch for Ori. He's part of the family. Okay. So, do you, should we cover <laughs> your, your staff more? Is it going to be an um, issue? I'll pull my cloak up and keep myself scarce. Uh, I think that should do it. Okay, cover you are my pretty face good at that. I, I think we might be overthinking this. We I feel haven't, like we are. I think we haven't right, had yeah. any resistance yet. We did um, spend a lot of time rock. thinking really about a rock. Oh, oh man, I'm yeah. not going to be able to sleep tonight no. over that. <laughs> I think so, it was because of okay. uh, Michael. Yeah. Why don't we just go to the watchtower and then judge our next steps once we figure out what the what the mood is like around the area? Maybe yeah. we'll have more information. Maybe they'll let us know. Scarce and, uh, we'll we just keep saying that. S- does that mean you're not going to come with us into the tower? Because I can leave Res with you. To... I don't know well, if we can just cross. It's, 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 it's a god's tower. I don't know if we're going to go in. Do we're just, it's just, it's like, we'll just pass it's through, like a, right? a toll, yeah. essentially, right? Where there are guards just doing like a checkpoint. It's like, just right around the hill. If you guys want to like peek out, you definitely can. Yeah. So taking a peek at it, you can see it is a wooden structure that's about 20 feet off the ground. It's uncovered. And you can see there is a blue drift globe that sheds light around this thing, and it's kind of held almost like a, um, a hot air balloon to the actual structure itself. I was not picturing that, so thank you. And <laughs> you can see on this structure yeah. there are two individuals. It's not obvious. like a stone tower. That is, that is what I was the sky. No, I know. <laughs> and you see standing on the kind of railing there is a gnome. And he's only about two feet tall, and so like kind of hard to see at first. It looks kind of like a seagull, but as they turn, they are covered in different glass bottles that all catch the light and mm-hmm. shine different colors across the ground in front of them. So you also Michael? see a <laughs> kinku, um that is kind of perched behind them on the actual platform. And they seem to be kind of like walking around and looking at things, and these seem to be the guards. All right, okay. let's just go, right? We'll go. Worst comes to worst, I can take them. Yeah, I feel There's... like... Right. We'll find. We'll figure out what kind of situation we're walking into by this checkpoint. If it's fine, then we just keep going. If it's not fine, then we reassess. Kill them. Yes, reassess. Reassess. Yep. Don't worry. I will not. Um, we're not killing. Guards. We're gonna reassess. I think I'm within range. Make a perception check. Yeah. That's. Oh, good use of the observancy. I just want to kill something. I know. I know. Ooh, not that around. good. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate phallus judgment. <laughs> Look, I've seen you eat meat, phallus, okay? <laughs> we literally just ate a bunch of crabs. Oh, it's under Killing for feet, survival sorry. is different than different. killing for pleasure and sport. We Did you need eat to eat the, all those crabs? We could eat the... the okay, no. What you crabs? know what? No, you're right. Never mind. Sorry, it looks like Ori's well, observing I something, can make so... Good berries. You can see Ori's just, like, squinting well ahead. I, well, what if I cast Good Fairy and then things like explode? Oh, I don't need to make a <laughs> check. It just I can interpret well, it. By oh, okay. Its lips. Oh, yeah, no, don't. That? No, I don't. Um, think it doesn't should. have a Wait range, so it's, also, I guess the perception check is to see. Gotcha. I can see survival, from that range. So with that trees. check, okay, as no. you watch, <laughs> you can see they seem to be uh, kind of talking, and you see the gnome first, and as you kind of look at their lips, you're able to make out the words. I think it was just a rabbit. Mm. And as you look behind them, you see the Kenku opens their mouth, and that's all. And you imagine repeating rabbit. exactly yeah. that wow. thing. Um, it's pretty easy to read Kenku mouths because they're it's usually... whatever the other one was saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's what you get. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's go. 
let's just, just go. go. We're just gonna go. Right. And if we hang around too much longer, the then it'll look okay. suspicious. I know. Yeah. The okay. longer we see. stand here, talk. I'm pronking. Okay. Not flying. Just <laughs> pronk, pronk, pronk. And I wave. Just if I, and when I see them, I will wave. Covering up a little. Not, yeah. <laughs> How is that better than just walk? I offered to disguise you. <laughs> no, that's good. That's definitely good. Yeah. yeah <laughs> just he's a vampire. He's allergic to the sun. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say, he's, like, really ugly. Don't, Don't worry, I only eat rabbits. <laughs> he has an Dallas, allergy to you someone. wave. <laughs> Alina, you pronk. You make your way over to this tower, mm-hmm. with the exception of Ori, relatively casually. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Ori, casual. actually. Ori is flying I'm casual. casual. <laughs> I'm just, I'm being scarce. Make a, make, a, <laughs> make a stealth check. This is social stealth. Social, social stealth. stealth. I feel like that's performance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I you saw rolled that like reaction. social stealth. Yeah. That's lovely. Oh, oh, the face. I saw that reaction. That face. Oh. 17. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, Just a rogue. Seven. <laughs> Just a rogue. Like, like dark wing day. duck, you walk oh across God. this checkpoint, casual as could be. Um, the rest of you kind of wave, you pronk, and you can see that this mm-hmm. gnome kind of pops up and just goes, oh Hello! And then you hear from behind him, oh, hello! Mm-hmm. And he just goes, no, not right now, Echo, one second. And he just oh, pops down. Echo. It is. And so just kind of pops down off mm-hmm. the railing and heads over, and you hear, what? And he just hops and just slowly floats down to the uh, bottom, mm-hmm. lands in the ground, and kind of pops over to you. And you can see he is wearing a little leather uh, vest, and it does have a stark bite kind of symbol that is faded and mm-hmm. painted on the chest itself. But he walks over and he just says, it's dangerous out here. I hope you are all being safe. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well, um, doing our best. well, I mean, and obviously having fine folk like yourself guarding the way is extremely helpful. Make a persuasion check. He kind of looks at all of you as you're talking to him um, and kind of squints at Ori for a second. He was sitting there like cloak up. 19. 19. But then kind of turns to you and goes, oh, thank you. We do our best, really. Uh, you know, just serve in the mediocrity, really. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, where are you going? Have you heard about the suits of armor? Yeah. We did hear especially about the suits bad of armor. lately, so yeah. please be careful. Okay, I we haven't encountered any. I would recommend not casting any magic this way until you get to, um, where are you going? Up to the beetle train. Um, oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, until you get to Beetle Train. Just be careful. There was an accident there, apparently, oh, today. No. At the train? Yes. Oh, what happened? Oh, nobody's hurt. It's just a potions merchant dropped a bunch of bottles, and so they're oh. all over, and it's caused quite a jam. Oh, no. That's am I right? Oh, they're the worst. Are the beetles well, that... okay? The beetles are fine. Oh, the bottle couldn't hurt a beetle. Oh, yeah, I just didn't know it was The beetle could hurt a bottle, though. Oh, true. The station up by Darkbriar? Like Darkbriar Station? What about it? Scarce. Anything up there? <laughs> what? What is there anything? Was this at South Station? No, or this yeah, South Sentinel uh, Station, just ahead. Okay. Um, any other news around? Uh, we're you what? know we've been on the road for a while. We haven't really had a chance to talk to anybody. We like mm-hmm. what? I don't know yeah. what's been going on. Like any other news other than like the uh, the. What have you heard from Darkbriar? Um, from Dark Briar, apparently you can get a good job as an Ember Swan now. I've thought oh. about it myself, but I don't really like their armor. It's very heavy, mm. and I'm not very big. Fair enough. We are, <laughs> we are traveling north, so I guess, have you heard any disturbances? Any particular the terrible things? Um, there's uh, been a just... lot of people traveling away from there, and they're yeah. saying things, but they're always saying things about that, and they okay. complain about things like mine cave-ins, but mm. it happens. You know, you dig them beneath the ground, and that's what happens when you disturb the earth. Mm-hmm. How's the weather? Hmm? How's the weather? Uh, well, you know, it's here. No, I'm not there. Oh, I don't know, I'm not there. Oh. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, it's absolute an absolute pleasure ah. to have had a chance to speak with you i do we really ought, need to continue on our way so that we can get to the train um uh you know because we're we are just road weary and i can't wait to just put my feet up and be able to travel in style you know so um we'll be saying farewell now okay well okay. um just remember no magic or mm-hmm. there's all kinds of problems that could happen now mm-hmm. oh is it um oh what was it called the um, the f- the fray. How much further north does that go? Oh, just a little ways. Uh, if you travel for maybe another ten minutes, you mm-hmm. should be okay. But I, I personally would wait maybe a little bit longer than that, just in case. 
That's not very many minutes at all. Okay. That's not too well, bad. The, the sooner the better because magic is so good. Am I right? So um, oh, It is the best, but this yeah. doesn't bother me. I'm a bottle wizard. A what kind a of what? wizard? A bottle wizard. What's a bottle wizard? I like keep my spells all in my bottles. Oh. Good. Oh. Cool. Wait, how how do you put spells in bottles? Well, every day I have to prepare my spells, and so I just mm-hmm. store them in each of my bottles, and when I cast them, I just smash them down, except for growth. When I want to enlarge myself, I have to mm-hmm. smash it in my hand, and I bleed a little bit, but that's what healing magic is for. Worth mm. it. Um, wait, so that doesn't just that doesn't disturb the... The, the fray? No, you? it doesn't disturb the fray. Oh. It's a it's a family traditional magic that we have. There's a few people in the magiocracy that pra- practice different kinds of magic. Oh. Huh. Does the magic within your bottles last longer than a day? No, unfortunately, it seems to uh, peter out at night. Maybe something about the moon. I'm not oh. sure. Hmm. The moon is pretty particular around here. Uh. <laughs> 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 is... Does that what? sound right? Is the moon particularly <laughs> particular? What do you, I mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> he turns what? and he says, oh, well, you know, people are always looking for it because of the um, uh, moon pennies, moon, moon herpes, moon wart. That's what it's called. Is that, uh, a, is that a plant? It's something that grows in underneath the moon, I think. Uh, oh. There's a whole bunch of arguments happening about it. I'm not really sure myself, but um, I guess it grows sometimes in the mediocrity. Has any guy ever heard of this Maybe mysterious yeah. planet at all? Has Billy heard of it? Has Billy heard of it? Has everyone heard <laughs> has of it? Billy has heard of it. it. This is something Kara that Billy has certainly heard. Kara has certainly heard, heard, of heard of it. Billy has definitely heard of it because this is something that um, came up would have been very prized. Mm-hmm. Was that? It came up before too, didn't it? It has in the Sea of Ice. Oh, okay. Eighteen. I think someone might have mentioned it. With an 18, Mm. you (laughs) have heard of different kinds of warts. Mm. These are typically semi-aquatic plants that are in relatively temperate climates. You've never heard of moonwort, Um, but something about it sounds kind of magical. Mm. And if it's something that only grows in the moonlight, that's pretty unusual. Yeah. Does Billy need to roll for more thoughts about it, or does Billy just like, I'll tell you later? (laughs) No, I mean, you, you know... You know a lot about it. This is something that is right within your wheelhouse. No role required. Okay. Does this grow within the major? Like, would I know about it? Just having lived there. Make a nature check. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, so, so you say that that you're not part of the Ember Swarm. Um, on whose behalf do you watch these roads fall? The Stark Bites. The Stark, oh, Stark Bite. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what's it like working for them? It's pretty good. They treat you well. I mean, I don't really see them a whole lot. You know, we're out well, on the but roads. Like, I mean. Are you being fairly compensated? You guys got a union? What's a union? Exactly. Oh, no. Mm, okay, well, um... Oh, no. <laughs> Don't Do worry it. about it. You'll be fine. They give us squirrel bucks. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My ears perk up. Squirrel bucks. <laughs> but, uh... So, sorry, you said there's an issue with the moon wart? Or because of moon wart? There's uh, moon wart around here? Yeah, apparently it grows around here. I don't know much about it myself. Like I said, um, I don't really have use for ingredients like that. Do you know where it grows? No. And quite frankly, if you do, I would just keep it to yourself because people, they get all kinds of violent about it. Oh. Yes. That's not good. No, it's not good stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Billy's just like, don't go get it, don't go get it. No, no, everything's fine. Um, Hey, okay, just curious because I have never been up in this part of the world. Okay, so you said that there's people who can do all different kinds of magic. So you're a bottle wizard. Yeah. What other kinds are there? Well, I mean, you have candle wizards, you have key wizards. Uh, I've heard of um, stitch sorcerers who come over from far, far to the west. And uh, I mean, all kinds of things, really. Uh, there are some families that practice magic and they keep it very hidden because that's where they get the power from mm-hmm. in the mageocracy. Well, it's a mageocracy, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. C- cool. Um, is it- <laughs> she looks at Ori and she's like, oh, but not that cool. Like, <laughs> um, is it obvious to how to get to the beetle train from here? Do we just follow the road? Oh, if you follow the road, you'll get right there. Okay. It's, Thank you so much. Yes, it's a stop on the way to... Um, Gosh, I can't remember my own Shadow capital Shadowgold Castle. No, I mean, technically, yes. Um, to the capital. 
You know that one. Ah, <laughs> I see. Yes. Salia Home. Yeah. So the, problem, home. the problem is I named it that, and somebody was like, like this other one from Critical Role. And I was like, and now all I can think of is that name whenever. Uh, all I think of is Salt is Salt Salt Time. So I'm just Time. like, it's a Salt yeah. City. Okay. We're going to Salt Lake. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> That's a whole different, language, whole different, whole different thing. Anyway, Salt Lake City, um, not a sponsor. So no. Alina kind of starts to <laughs> to you know walk away, mm-hmm. and then she's like, "Do we tip you or?" <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't say no to a tip. Okay, she also, flips in my silver coin. Oh, thank you. And he yeah. kind of catches it, fumbles a little bit, but no problem. Uh, tucks it away in his pocket. Thank you. And uh, he would say, um, just, you know, the suits of armor are dangerous, but mm-hmm. the, the bandits that we have around here are pretty bad, too. If you haven't mm-hmm. been to this part of the world before, um, they can all use all kinds of magic. Mm-hmm. And um, they have these magical hands. And uh, they're very dangerous, so be careful if you see them floating around. What do the hands do? Well, well they hit people, and they slap people, and they push people. Oh, like they, they make a hand to do their punching for them? I guess so, yes. Okay. How does their magic elude the magical armor? Followers of Big B, perhaps. Well, there's these upstarts, people who can't really cast magic, if you can believe that. But they call themselves wizards. They learn it through books. <laughs> learning. Could you imagine such a thing? You Anyways, called yourself uh, a bottle <laughs> wizard. <laughs> yeah, he just puts everything in bottle. Well, so I was just saying he's like... I resist the urge to look at Ori. <laughs> <True. laughs> <laughs> but he... Um, he... Oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. It's okay. Bottle it's wizards. Okay. You said there's wizards who have to learn. Hating on wizards because like, they have to learn things. Yeah, yeah but there's a reason he was hating on them. Because uh, oh, bandits making me. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. And so, I, I, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to really attract those suits. Oh. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, they seem to be able to operate around them, no problem. So, even worse. Be very careful of those. We will be careful. That's curious. Oh, well, thank you, um, sir. What's, what's your name? Uh, he said, <laughs> and I've forgotten already. Calent Wool Whistle. Uh, no, I'm uh, sorry, what? <laughs> Calent Wool Whistle. Calent Wool Whistle. You can just call me Cal, but Calent Wool Whistle Cal is, is name, easier, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Why do people choose difficult names? Okay. I think anyway. that's just a regular. Well, <laughs> well thank you again. Um, <laughs> um, take I... care of yourself now. You too. Your name is. Good luck. He kind of nods and begins to head back. (laughs) So, you continue to make your way north, following this road, which becomes steadily more stable. There is grass that grows up and around, and so no longer are you in the shadow of this hill. And you would imagine, Alina, after about 20 minutes, no longer are you within the realm of this fray. You have uh, none of these little blossoms that are falling down and crumbling into the dirt, and there is actual, like, fresh plant life here. Alina experimentally casts Mage Hand... Wait, I see you try to cast a spell, and I <laughs> try to say, wait, 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 wait. Why are we casting spells? I just want to see, because I think we're out of the fray. Oh, but don't we not want to cast spells so they don't want to attract the oh, armor? Oh, I forgot don't about that. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. No she stops halfway through the spell, and it's just like. <laughs> hey, Billy. It, yeah. What's, what's mood wart? So if you have any, would love to know about it. It's very valuable, oh. and it's also a an awesome ingredient for getting around uh, iron and sun allergies. Oh. Uh, it's really expensive, though. Oh. Do you know what it looks like? Well, it's kind of a long stem. Uh, it looks very herbal, and mm-hmm. then the leaves... Uh, kind of sprout off in clumps and then they have like little waves like a little ha- like fancy rich person bullshit hand fan where it's it's good for fanning yourself and it's got feathers on it. A fan? No, well, no, because it's not good for fanning yourself it, and it has feathers on it and it just gets everywhere maybe like it gets a, in your face A bouquet? When... A what? A, a bouquet. Like no, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fan but it's got feathers on it. Would it be worth oh, I had a, a duster <laughs> I know what a well, fucking duster is, Ori. Well, that's what you're we'll describing. Find some, and then we'll all, and then we'll, 
would it be as worth asking nature about it? I'm sorry, what? You can ask nature things? Like yeah. the concept of nature? Yes. I can I mean I can ask the, the local, you know <gasps> ah. to see if they've but, like, seen it. Oh, Valis talks to animals. Yeah. Yes. Ex- right. yeah. But Except I more. Yeah, but, worth but I just nature. got told to not cast a cantrip. Do well, we want to be casting spells? Right, I, I don't casting? know if that's... But moon wart. Is it, it, it would be Is worth it? moon I don't know. Is it worth it? Make I'm going to look... I'm going to save that. Uh, Does it only for, grow under the moon and... Um, why? Kind of for detail when it's... It's very later. specific okay. circumstances. Cool. You later. can't just cultivate it. It's I gotcha. It would probably Real take difficult. me about like 11 oh, so. minutes, but I could. <laughs> Not ten? Specifically 11, 11 minutes, because it's one minute casting one time minute, plus ten yeah, minutes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, go. Very specific. <laughs> well, um, are we walking into, Like, I just... Yeah, we're sorking in. Okay. I mean, I do you think it's worth, like, going off the beaten path to look for it? Because I think that would raise suspicion. And we're keeping a low profile. Well, it's getting close I to know. about time that we'd want to set up camp. We can continue on. Is there any other reason why you'd want it except for the gold value of it? Find a spot. It's a good ingredient in potions. You can make potions? Here is what I propose. We made potions together in a ship. It was great. Oh, Until it wasn't. We can yeah. make our way to the station. Mm-hmm. Uh, get there in probably uh, two hours or so if we take our time and uh, from there we can find out what is going on and when the next trains are departing Mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps find an area close by to camp for the night and forage see if perhaps there is moonwort and the such and uh, make our way in the morning we can go forage and I'll listen listen for the oh yeah yeah the the Mm. yeah and if it is important for you to find this moon wart, then we can risk magic and just face whatever comes. God, that was cool. He's so cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but he's killed all the things I want to kill. <laughs> Turn and walk. Um, I think that's an awesome plan, Ori. Let's do it. <laughs> Ori is secretly super pumped to ride the beetle track. Yeah, 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 secretly, no I feel like Ori is like practically scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point he's like, Maybe the happiest we've seen him. It's all coming together. <laughs> so probably at, a, at some point before you get to the beetle train, are you gonna your intent is to take a break in camp? Think get to the, the beetle train, find out what's going on, and then maybe like backtrack a little to find a spot yeah. to camp out. Got spend night. the night and yeah. then the Somewhere next day. The so for this last yeah. leg we want to get journey, to the gate and then we can find our food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for expediency, shouldn't we just um, rest on the train <laughs> and just try to get there as soon 30. as possible? Dirty yeah, but if the train isn't leaving until tomorrow morning, then... yeah, and foraging. Or right. right. As you're walking along this path, there's a place where it becomes almost like a little uh, right angle. You can see it's been designed to go around a rock. And this rock, just a normal piece of tavertine probably, not that you would know what that is. Um, But the path just kind of has been designed to go around it. And there is something weird about that. And you're not sure, (laughs) you're really not sure. If it's the rock or it's just this weird little curve in the road. I mean, okay. these blocks, these blocks are pretty like regulation size. So it's weird that they did this. Billy we runs can over with a dagger and five just... minutes. Okay, but wait. Are you going to stab it? Rock. Okay, but wait. <laughs> Billy you starts carving his You can't give me this with a 30. <laughs> yes. If Billy sees another fucking stupid just a rock in the middle of the path, and then the last time Billy saw one, Billy stabbed it. So Billy's going to stab it again. Oh, Billy has learned. From from her experiences and rushes forwards and Orion's you're like there's something weird about this you see Billy just and the rock just falls apart I mean it's a piece of tavertine and you seeing it you recognize flakes of silica and like this there are elements to this it's just oh, a it's fucking right. rock see, but beyond I'm... the rock oh, okay. hiding well let me get a visual <laughs> And take the rock away because Billy destroyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Look what we did to this rock. Are you sure you want to fuck with us? <laughs> Do they really want to attack us? I just killed a rock <laughs> and shouted about it proudly. Yeah, yeah, she just fucked that rock Red up. Ba. Yeah. You see the rock with the beautiful uh, flowers on it. Not anymore, because that thing yes. got 
fucked. And you may notice some suits of armor that are closing in on this region. Oh, yeah. Oh. They are. And, uh, Billy, as you chip away are from we this. Over here? Yeah, where's you Billy? Are Billy's going to be direction. at the rock. Yeah. We're coming and so, here. Where are the. Oh, there they are. We're like guys, over here somewhere. These guys are stepping out from around all of these little elements. And Billy, as you chip this, Billy, you need to be within five feet of this stone. Yep. Everybody else can place Billy's themselves in the where they would like to be. Let me change the music real Billy. quick. And we can roll for five. No, on that side. On the other side. <laughs> Battle rock. I mean, Billy is uh, hot-headed, but she's not. She wouldn't. I would go around the other side oh, of the up, rock. Up to within base contact of an enemy, and I'm then also... turn to the rock and stab <laughs> the rock. I'm also really about, I like the idea that Billy, I imagine that Billy makes eye contact with Ori and stabs it the whole time. Yes. So that's, like, that's really just like, we are not going to waste more time on another fucking rock. So I didn't want to say it, but in the last session it wasn't a puzzle it was for this because I needed a way for you guys to all run right up into this without you having to <laughs> so the puzzle was social engineering yeah. oh this is like much. fucking 5D chess I had it. so anybody <laughs> natural 20 for an issue oh no Absolutely not, Joe. Uh, where I put myself. Oh. When you plan oh. on running D and D for like fifty years, you have to really start like <laughs> pulling out some different uh, strategies. Woo! Natural twenty. Very Gina. nice. All right, the leader starting. Yeah. To nice. What do you want to? Do? Not natural twenty. Anybody else okay. natural twenty? Yeah. No. Twenty-five to twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-four mm -hmm. for Ori. All right. Twenty to fifteen. Uh, Rez is at 17 or 18. 17 Sorry. or 18, okay. Close. Uh, he's at 18. Alrighty. 15 to 10. Billy's at 12. Okay. No, excuse me, 13. 13 for Billy. 10. 10 for Valis. Aww. Minka, what about you? Six. Okay. <laughs> Minka at six. And then Finn is going to come in at a 14. God damn. So the way that this works out, Alina is going to be leading us off, followed by Ori, and then Rez, and then Finn, and then Billy, and then Valis, followed by, surprisingly, the not very dexterous hollow armor, and then Minka. I was just so relieved that there was a rock I could identify. I <laughs> and there's, there's, oh man, anyways. <laughs> This is exactly as you can see it before you, and if you can't see it very well on the battle cam, at Alberon RPG on Instagram, you can see this in much greater detail if the players take pictures. Thank you very much, Vincent. Alina, you are starting us off, or you are on deck. What okay. would you like to do? So you said there's guys and hollow armor? And no, so as these step out, what you are seeing emerge from the periphery around Billy as Billy just chips away staring back at you, um, these things, you can see these hovering metal masks and open helmets. There is nothing within these suits. They are very much hollow armor. All four of them are All there. four. Okay. Um, Alina's like, Billy, Billy. What? There's guys. They're, no, it's the armor. It's not guys, it's the armor. And, um, and then she's gonna be like, whoosh up into the air. She's gonna like, whoosh, um, just to get a better vantage point. No problem, so you proc. Yeah. I do. Pronk vertically. Just straight up. Yeah. Oh, oh, cool. Um, got a 10 foot vertical And pronk. now that she's got a good vantage, um, she's gonna leave the one closest to Billy there because she figures Billy would like to have a go. I um, fuck something up. And so she's gonna cast, she's gonna cast Hex. Okay. Uh, wait, hollow armor. Necrotic damage. What you doing? Yeah, she's not gonna cast hacks. Um, she's just gonna Eldritch Blast at this one. Yeah, she's go for go it. Go pop, pop. Throw those two Eldritch Blasts, I'm and as these begin to another climb, another natural twenty on this very nice. dice. Ooh. Um, okay. Dice. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay. What's the last time we lost stuff? Before. Well, Relatively crappy. recently, you're just coming close to the end of like the day, so you're like physically tired. But you're—I imagine that you have most of we your have resources stuff. with you because yeah, you specifically haven't been casting spells. Yeah, because yeah. we basically like woke up after the crab boil and kind of started just walking and haven't really encountered. So for that too much natural twenty, that is a uh, na that's nineteen points of force damage, and then the other one is gonna be. Um, sorry, 
No worries. Oh, I see, you know, I'm like 80. That's too many. That's a lot. So eight. Um, 13 points of force damage okay. and four bludgeoning. Okay. For what it's worth, the bludgeoning damage only does about half what you would imagine it should. Even though, so it is magical. Does that? Okay. Um, all right. And so she's like, hey, that bludgeoning only did about half as much as I thought it should. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so then finally... Um, She's gonna tell Rez, um, go bother the closest one and help whoever hits it next. All right, you got it. <laughs> Leathery wings are gonna carry Rez on his turn in that direction. <clears throat> that is your turn, Alina? Yes. Alrighty. Alina, as you throw these Eldritch Blasts towards this creature and it hits, you can see the little rings that make up the metal of the armor on this creature. They almost glow with each impact and seem to be the source of this resistance. Hmm. But that is your turn. That brings us to Ori. Ori, what do you want to do? Time to shine. Um, do I already have any bonus? Because Rez is now... Is Rez already there? Fucking no, he, he, no. he okay. So he I don't have to move on his own turn. Yeah. Okay. Do I have? Uh, I I can sneak attack. If I'm, I, I can do the things that I need to to sneak attack. But do I already have uh, them unawares from where I am? You don't or, know. Okay. Uh, These are not humans. There's, I mean, they're they're hollow suits of armor that are certainly perceiving Billy. You don't know what kind of sense they are using to do so. Okay. It's kind of hard to read armor. Yeah. Without a face. Uh, I guess I'm gonna. Um, As an action, you could make a insightful <laughs> fighting. The one that I can see. Okay. That's like going, or like has noticed Billy. Yeah, the closest to Billy. Yeah. No problem. Um. So. That is against. Uh, it's against. Uh, it's deception check. Okay. Eighteen. Uh, 28. 28. <laughs> this is armor. <laughs> and you feel pretty good about what you can damage on armor. Cool. You feel okay. really insightful about it? Yeah. And yeah, then I'm gonna focus on an area of weakness that would be typical of an armor area sure. uh, for someone wearing it, I guess. With this ring mill, you know just above the navel there's a place where it clips on, and that place right between the breastbone and right between the belly, if you pierce right there, it goes right into the thoracic cavity. That's heavy damage on a human. Unclear as how much damage it will do to a hollow suit of armor. We're about to find out. Go ahead and take it. And that's uh, like something to hit. Something good to hit. 15 plus. uh, It's a 27. 27 hits? Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to do sneaky sneak. And also, I'm going to try to expend a charge while it's not in range of anyone in case anything happens when I expend a charge. Sure. Very good. Pew pew. Pew pew indeed. And... Did we ever give Finn a weapon? <laughs> yeah, I gave Finn a short sword. Oh yeah, he gave him a sword. He still has it? Nice, oh, numbies. He threw it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is above That's average numbies. <laughs> That's all we want in life. Yeah. Just ba- above average numbers. I'll take average numbers, honestly. Math, 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 math. 31 points Ooh. of damage, most of which is piercing, and eight of which is magical fire. All of which does the full amount. Is that nice. arrow <laughs> right through. And you can see this huge like sheet of these little rings just falls off as you snap that bit of armor. And this would have been in the guts of a human being, but you just hear it clang and fall down into the hollow space. And leaves the mark on the spot yes, that it hits. Definitely in the back. In the back of like the hollow darkness, you just see <laughs> it burns into life. Cool. Anything else, Ori? Uh, that's gonna be it for me. Alrighty. Rez, on his turn, goes, All right, Alina, I got this! And he's gonna fly. I said the closest one, but I think think that's the one closest to um, Billy, probably. Okay, so. And I just shot it. And Billy, you feel this kind of smelly wind (laughs) past you, (laughs) and then you hear from about 30 feet in front, or not 30 feet, probably like another uh, 15 feet in front of you. Um, as Rez just says, all right, come over here. And he like gets ready to start yeah. attempting to help. He, he doesn't, he doesn't get quite close I know, enough. Did you so. fart? 
He well, doesn't oh, okay. To that so since um, <laughs> he'll use his whole movement okay. action to get there, even though that means he won't be able to use the whole action. No worries. So that is Rez's turn. That brings us to Finn. I didn't fart. <laughs> Finn is going. It was Finn. To... Does it just like naturally smell like sulfur? Yes. It's cool. Okay. It's something. All the ladies in hell say that I'm very good smelling. No, you know what? I can't. I can't smell that. <laughs> He's going to go run down. over into these put bushes, in and the he tree. is going to make a stealth check. <laughs> That's it's pretty cut. good. That's good. <laughs> and he is I'm going to hide. Ori, you're definitely aware of him, uh, but with a 22, anybody with a lower passive suddenly just loses track of Finn. Mm-hmm. As he gets What's ready a for a sneak attack, it's just a little bit longer of a process for him. <laughs> that is Rez's turn. That brings, or sorry, that is Fizz, Finn's turn. That brings us to Billy. Fizz is sweet. Fizz is like... Billy, you are up. Uh, Valis, you are on deck. Billy's learning. Hexblade's curse first. Okay. It's the nearest one. Uh, and then Billy... Billy is going to uh, attack twice. Okay. Uh, that is a... 13 for one and a 23 for another. 13 is a miss. 23 is a hit. Sweet. I wasn't prepared to hit. With the 13, you swing forward and you miss as your hex tightens around the armor and almost staggers this creature. But as it swings upright and you can see brings a sword to bear, you're able to bring your own. How much damage is that? Uh, about to roll and Billy is going to... Um, hold on, I quit. Yes. Defensive flourish? Yes, I was just saying if I could do that and I can. Aha! <laughs> uh, so that's... 14 points of magical piercing damage and four to my AC. Very nice. And, and Billy is in base contact with that one that looks like he's holding a gun from this angle, but it's yeah. probably not. It's not. Some it, sort of halberd. Yeah, it's like a halberd, but it's a sword. Um, as he is getting closer to you, oh. as you are closing oh. distance on them, this arrow from Ori passes you and almost disables part of the armor. That gives you a pretty wide berth. You cut across, and this creature is looking a little hurt. And also, uh, for additional bonus points. I'm assuming a magical piercing okay. from the hex plates curse. Just bonus points. Just bonus, it just it just says e- the bonus equals your proficiency bonus. It doesn't I think say it's what necrotic, but uh, no worries. Either way, oh. it deals damage. Cool. Also, it needs a little ring for hex plates curse. Anything else, Billy? That is it. Okay. This creature hit by Ori, hit by you, yeah. seems to be starting to get a little bit rough. Parts of the ring mail are falling away to reveal the kind of hollowness within. But that is your turn, Billy. That brings us to Valis, and then the hollow armor is going. You want to lift okay. it? Lift them up, yeah. Um, I am going to pass. Do I think the spell magic would do anything on these armors? Are you going to use an action to make an arcana check to discern that? In your experience, your memories are a little thin on this area. Mm. They are. I'm going to cast it to the spell magic on this one. Which one? This one. Okay. The unharmed. Second here. I'll just see if that does anything. It's worth a try. You cast a spell magic, and as it hits this suit of armor, you can see the rings glow bright. And this creature, there is no entity within, but it arches its back, and you can hear this as it seems to almost be ripped apart from within, but with a natural 20, it is able to succeed on that save and is not harmed, but you feel like that could have worked. Oh. Absolutely, that could have worked. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice. Um, anything else, Valis? I'm just gonna move a little bit. Um... And as you walk away, you can still hear those rings still vibrating, and you would imagine probably wouldn't have destroyed it, but would have at the very least incapacitated it for a certain amount of time. Okay. <laughs> anything else, Valis? Um... No. All right, you stand on the path. That is your turn, and that brings us to the hollow armor. So this hollow armor, as it steps, clanks with heavy feet. That is not terribly, terribly fast. But Billy is right there. A chunk. A chunk. Mm-hmm. Five. Actually, because. Yeah. Hmm. 
don't I don't like this. Mm, no. Just straight through the bushes. <laughs> They're not smart. <laughs> so you will notice they didn't go fast through the bushes. Uh, they plod in a very straight line. And uh, Billy, they seem to be mostly heading towards you. Shocking. As they clonk right near you, you expect them to swing these weapons towards you, but the one in front of you does not. The armor poof, yawns open and it lunges towards you. Don't like uh, that. Oh. Can you go ahead and for me make a strength around. save, please? Good God. No. <laughs> it's weird. It's like they warned us about this. <laughs> My <Yeah>. weakness. <laughs> well, we also didn't do anything to make it happen. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I mean, Uh-oh. I mean, that the armor has been trying face. to envelop us. Oh, I see. From someone. Six. Uh-oh. Six. Billy's not <laughs> strong. It closes <laughs> around you, and your arms and legs are trapped outside, but you feel the rings almost like the suckers on an octopus just pull you fully within as it uses GERD on you, and you are now considered clad in plate mail armor. Are you proficient in plate mail armor? Uh, Are you proficient in plate mail armor? Am I proficient? Is plate mail's heavy armor, yes? Yes. No. You are unable to cast spells while in heavy armor. That's fine. (laughs) You are also considered restrained. uh, That's less fine. You can use an action to attempt to make a strength check, or a strength save, actually, to break free. Your AC is now That is the first one. (laughs) As you are restrained, these other two will each take two attacks at advantage against you. Or sorry, one of them is going to take two attacks at advantage against you. The first oh, one <laughs> is going to be a uh, 15 to hit. Oh, yeah, for restraint. Sorry? 15 to hit. No. The second one, much better with the natural 20. Oh. Oh. And yep. so that is going to be a 28 to hit. Billy. Oh, actually, it, it's a critical no matter what, because you're, uh, is there an advantage against you because you're restrained? Oh, no. I guess a restraining oh, ring gosh. would be good, too. Oh, Billy, oh, you, you are going to be taking... No, uh, restraining ring. Restrain doesn't give you automatic crits. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Give me one second. Let me monitor. Oh, yeah, that's, like, uh, a natural 20 will, that's but... Paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. No, but the natural 20 does. So you are taking 20 points of slashing damage Ow. as this cleaves into you. The second one misses, bouncing off the armor that is actually restraining you. The other creature that had to take that uh, other action is only going to get a single attack, and a 15 does not hit, correct? It does not. And so, Billy, you weather this initial storm, but you are currently restrained. The vision that you have is just a slit, and you feel very enclosed within this space. Like did they roll with disadvantage? They did not. Creatures, at- oh no, that's my disadvantage. Ah. Attack rolls against me have advantage. Did ah. they roll with advantage? They did. Okay. So Ooh. that is all of their turns, and that does bring us to you, Minka. From where you are, you watch as an arrow flies out, and uh, Alina flies up with a spell. Billy lunges forward and is just trapped by one of these creatures, and they begin to carve into the one that is holding Billy. What would you like to do? Oh no. Um, <laughs> so Minka's going to move over towards this rock here. Mm-hmm. Um, just to get a better view of what's going on. Thank what's you. What's your movement? Uh, 35. So. Five more. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, <laughs> she will then uh, do archer form with her bonus action and shoot an arrow at the one that's not enveloping Billy, but this guy. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and make your attack roll. So, so as you're running forwards, especially with this being a pathway of mm-hmm. like basaltic uh, rocks, your starlight just shines off this entire pathway, and no problem. Um, this is a very clear shot. Nice. Uh, 22. 22 hits. All right. So, uh, minimum damage. Um, it takes a grand total of six radiant damage. Hey, you know what? Every little bit counts. And it does the full amount that you would expect. Yay! Yay. So this star just poof, into it, and you can see the shoulder poof, jerks back, but then it clangs forwards again. All right, and then I would like to use uh, my action. So if I remember correctly, I have rocks in my pocket already. You do? Um, you always do. Yes, but I'm specifically throwing rocks yes, in my pocket do. already. Not um, cool rocks. Yeah. Those aren't, we don't use cool rocks for magic stone. We don't, no. Because they kind of crumble sometimes. So instead, I'm going to use uh, my action as a for guiding bolt okay. on that same one. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Last time I was restrained. I, I I'm aiming away from you. It's not the one, that, uh, not the one. Not the one that's oh, holding you, though. No. Yeah, it's this right. one. So that's a 28 oh, to hit? Well, 28 fine. absolutely hits. <laughs> All right. And yeah. it's funny, especially because you glow with the celestial light. You fire a star from the constellation behind you, and it kind of pings off the shoulder. And then you rush forwards and throw this huge guiding bolt, which mm -hmm. is not part of the star magic. No, it's terrible, though. I rolled so many twos. Mm. Uh, so that's um, <laughs> nine points of radiant damage. They and so it's really just two so little stars, ping, ping, but the second one does make this creature glow so from the top. And so anything else, Minka? Um, Minka is just going to yell at Billy, hold on. Ah, uh, that's the end of my turn. All mm -hmm. right. Billy, from somewhere far off, you hear the echoey metallic sound of mm -hmm. Minka's voice. But that is your turn, Minka. That brings us to the top of the round and to Alina. Billy grits out like, well, M Minka's like, hold on, Billy. Just like. Protect Minka! <laughs> uh, she's hyperventilating from inside of the <laughs> space. Awesome. Any, like, uh, part of Billy showing? Or is it like 100% That's what I was gonna ask encapsulated you. by the... Hey, it's my turn. Oh, <laughs> I was going to ask that question on my turn. And so, Alina, asking that question on your turn, <laughs> my response to you, Alina, would be um, pretty hidden. You imagine as... Yeah, pretty hidden. Can you I see really any see. part of her? You said eyes. There were eyes looking out. That's more that Billy is like looking out through this little tiny slit, and so that's kind of implying that there's not really anything visible. Uh, okay. okay. No, there's no, no okay. visible part of Billy. Uh, um. Okay, so I'm going to. Do you have the? Um, I've been looking for it like this whole time. Do you have the, the wheel? The the wheel. The, the measuring wheel. wheel. Uh, somewhere. Oh, Alan, yeah, do, do you have a wheel? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, I used it to transport. No, we're still, oh. we're still in the red on those. That's also the platform. Put this away because this is rolled two sixes now. Ooh. Yeah. So, look at this. We know how we feel about dice that roll two sixes in a row. Yeah. Okay, okay. By the way, so, can that one go straight to jail? The dice okay. that rolled two sixes in a row? But <laughs> so, Alina is going to fly down to where Billy mm. is. Okay. Um, it's got the, I can the see that there is a side. slit, right? Like where yes. eyes would go. And when you get up close to Billy, yeah, totally you can see Billy's eyes. Nice. Okay. And Billy is panicking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Alina is going to say, she's going to get like right, right. So if, if Billy is like actually here, Alina is going to be like in the center of this. Sure. She's going to say, sorry, Rez. And she's going to shove her finger <laughs> through the slit. No. And as soon as she makes contact with any part of Billy, eyeballs, I don't care. <laughs> Phenomenal. I love this. So, Billy, you watch Selena runs to her, like flies down towards you and reaches out a hand and you try with all of your might to pull this armor up because you're going to grab onto Alina and then you watch the fingers come out and you're like, wait. And then right into your eyes. And then... <laughs> There's a crash of thunder, and Alina just thunder steps you out of the suit. And the suit, just... yeah, fantastic. Is but Billy blinded now? <laughs> um, it was I mean... more like, okay, if you saw fingers coming, you would close your eyes, and Alina would just like, you know, against the... It more depends on the force. Though. It really does, yeah. At I am point, not trying, are not I was not trying to blind Billy. In so. the heat of battle, I'll Billy's a, blinded. I'll make a dex check if you need me to. Okay. Captain so, Santa, so, um, no mercy. And then, okay, so for the damage... Is that a save? It's a con save, I believe. And that is for all... It's for three of them, correct? And Rez, unfortunately. And Rez. Oh, uh, no, Rez. But Rez, okay. get out of there. Two of them. He, I told him I was everybody. sorry. It's a con save? It's a con save. A 21, a 13, and a natural 20 for a 20. <laughs> Rez three. gets a natural 20 on Let's his. Let's go! Very nice. Oh, buddy! Um, he still might die, though. Um, oh. Okay, so it's DC 18. So two um, succeed, one fails. Okay, and I'm just going to use computer to roll it. Is it? Oh, this so is magic, far. right? Yes. Um... Uh -oh. Still fails. Oh, okay. So it's thunder damage. Um, I just rolled the shittiest damage. Well, no. That's about having a nice there streak here. In it's, there. Um, it's, it's 22 points of thunder damage. 22 or 22 points of thunder damage. Or 11 nice. for the ones who uh, succeeded. And Rez goes down because he only has 10 hit points. No. Bye, body. Is it 22? 22, yeah. Okay, body. give me one second here to just do a little bit of quick math. Uncanny dodge. Yes. Uncanny dodge. I told him I was like, look, we, he and I have an understanding that if he dies in battle, it is what it is. 
This sucks, one that Ori suck, shot. I believe specifically, uh, he said. I think Ori shot that oh, Ori, one. Yeah, right, because it's yeah, a glowing one. The, yeah, I shot that other one. This guy is gone. And this, you can move, Billy? Uh, no, okay. Hex plays Curse does not get moved. Um, but I do get some health back. There you go. Yeah. So as you do Thunder Step away, this <laughs> creature that was almost grabbing onto Billy is just crumpled to the ground, and the armor just kind of twitches and flinches. And the, you can hear the vibrations of these rings as they try to reassemble themselves. Mm -hmm. And for what it's worth, it seems like that might happen at some point, but not any time in the future. There are like little rings off into the woods. Like this is a creature that is scattered. So we're not, uh, so it might come together like in the next like hours. In the next like case days. Days. Okay, cool. Um, 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 and you could really just take pieces this. and like start throwing them around to make it longer. Okay. Just, I mean, so, I, I do need a new set of right. down. Um, Alina's just, now that she's got Billy out, she's just gonna be like, <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. I am. Go kill. Yeah. Yeah. Go kill. Okay. There you go. And that's Alina's turn. Right. Fantastic. Use the thunder step. That brings Thank us you. to Ori. Uh, I think I need to get a better line of sight now. It's, it's all reliable at this so, point. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially though, within the suit of armor, I think that's a very, that very good. good use. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I can go if I go back to here. Uh, I guess. I have line of sight there, Vincent but definitely yeah. was, was gearing up to face um, stuff you out of there. So and then multiple choices. I'm going to <laughs> really bonus action. Is that you uh, I'm going to bonus action hide on this right, one. It's... Okay. That's uh, 24, I think. 24 hits. She wouldn't uh, have to, to hide. Oh, to hide. Yeah. To you feel pretty hidden. You yeah. Spell. All right. And sneak attack. Oh, you would be able to see you though, because you have a passive you. perception of twenty six, and I can so see you with my eyes. That's true. <laughs> For detail, in a mirror. Like, oh, um, that's a 23, uh, 25. 25 hits, and then sneak attack. I feel like Whoa! Track my spell is like. A reasonable human. <laughs> that was just a really the it was the intensity of it that was very really funny. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna not use any of the Which really are traveling bars. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, great numbies! Hey! hey. hey. Of the table. hey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the glowing one? No, that one's destroyed. This no, is, no, it's no. Not. the glowing, the glowing one is still up. The one that was destroyed yeah. was hexed. The white bandit. Oh, the glowing one. I'm sorry. I thought you meant the glowing okay. one with my. And you um, rolled. You already rolled for mark. advantage, so. Yes. <clears throat> um. So then that's uh, boopa boopa. Boop, boop, boop. Twenty, thirty-two. I think. Nice. Points of damage. 32 yeah. points of damage. That is more than enough for that. Minka set this up with the guiding bolt and the uh, arrow a little bit, but that's that's quite a bit of damage. So Ori, as you are able to sink this in without even using the extra ability from this magical bow, you strike into this armor and it just shatters apart. And similar to the other ones, it rattles, it moves. It's not dead, but it's gone from this battlefield. Cool. Um, anything else, Ori? That is it. Ah. I'll use my, it's a short rest for this. I'll use a fucking action surge and do it again. Yeah, do it. <laughs> oh, sorry. There's another one. I can't get all three. No. You can't sneak attack this I'm, one. I'm trying to insight check the DM. <laughs> How does that work for you? It's not working well. <laughs> never, it never works well. Always yeah. disadvantage. Yeah. But. All right, so 17 plus uh, 30, I think, to hit. 30 hits. 30 hits like God. <laughs> <laughs> Just yelling <laughs> at the sky. <laughs> Fuck you! Oh! Um, <laughs> and I think this time, because I'm not using sneak attack, I will use... Uh, charge. Okay. Sorry. And I'm going to make it a trip attack. Cool, cool, cool. What kind of save is that? Strength? Uh, yes, I believe it's a strength save. I need another. I'll just 19. Roll. 19, I believe, is a success. Let me just double check. Strength and con seem to be pretty good for these guys, these suits of armor. Yeah, what? that's a success. But. It takes I'm try 11. One up and drop in it, but Ooh, uh, 19 plus uh, 25 so. points of uh, piercing. Eight and of which, which one are you shooting at? Is fire. That one. Okay. Uh, eight of which is the magical fire. 
Okay, that is still up. But with that shot, as the magical fire begins to erupt from within inside, you can see through the eyes of the helm, through the little elements from between the pauldrons and the plate, these flames begin to lick up. It's on fire from within, but still very much up. Um, anything else? Ori? That's it for me. All right. After that action surge, that brings us to Rez. Oh. <clears throat> no. Finn, uh, who has now taken the hide action, is going to da- is going to run and then bonus action um, to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And like, kind of <laughs> getting to the end of his movement and still being at a distance. Oh. Holding this sword, he's going to go, uh, I mean, that's <laughs> 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 a Finn. I mean, <laughs> Just sometimes you just short. gotta hook us so, in the armor, see it coming. At disadvantage, he still managed to get a 25. Oh, fudge! And he was hidden, and so this is technically a sneak attack. Nice. That's the worst. <laughs> I hate this guy so much. He's stealing your kills. Finn, 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 Finn. <laughs> so. I'm gonna just kill Finn. <laughs> that is a lot of damage. That is 11. Gross. <laughs> That's going to be 32 points of damage. Fuck you. <laughs> and this uh, that one that was was previously up is now very much down. It only had three points of health left. And so Did this sword kind of yeah, strikes it with the hilt, oh. and the hilt hits the very top of the helmet. The helmet pops off, and the rest of the armor crumbles down. And he just goes, yeah, it worked! <laughs> and just seems very surprised, begins to like run towards the sword to pick it up. But that's Finn's turn. And that brings us to Billy. Oh. Billy's soul. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like gone. Alina turns to you and goes, we can kill now. And you go, yes. And you turn and you hear Finn just go, it worked. As you just see this thing die to the hilt of a sword I'm thrown sorry, up. sorry, Billy. <laughs> uh, um, Eldritch blast pew pew. pew. Yeah. <laughs> gotta do the pew pew. Get him. Motherfucker. <laughs> nope. No, the, the highest is a 17. That is a miss, unfortunately. And as you throw them, one clangs off and seems to chrome off and into the distance. But anything else, Billy? Billy really considers just murdering Finn. <laughs> Valis turns, action. and like, as you're thinking about that, Valis is turning, and as he's running towards the sword, he's like, like, pretty good, right? And he's just, he's like, really feels like they he's contributing five. to this fight. <laughs> that is Billy's turn that brings us to Valis. Uh, question, yep. when... Billy was um, hugged by armor. Did that same armor like attack her? No, the other armor attacked her, but you got the sense that having the armor on the second turn, there was probably something even worse coming and it would be worse than just a regular attack. It'd be like constrict. Okay. I was thinking like, yeah, like compress. Yeah. Mm. No, like a straw. Or like Iron Maiden. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Okay. Oh. The first move is Gird, the second one is Guild. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Ooh. Uh, oh. Melting into... Uh. Here's your crown. Okay. Well, that goes bad idea. <laughs> I was just gonna get new armor. <laughs> I mean, you still could. <laughs> we might need a few extra steps in between those things, though. Kill yeah, dispel first. magic on him. Okay, Actually, very nice. Hmm. I'm trying to he think, to how kill. long will dispel magic Kitty. work on these armors? Because <laughs> <laughs> what if I just let him hug me and then dispel him? You can't oh, guess spells. Well, well, I, I can because he's because I'm proficient in heavy armor. You could ready your action. Yeah. Right. What you doing? Um, I think I will just getting ready to be traumatized. <laughs> I'll just cast dispel magic on him. Okay. It'll be fine. What kind of save is that? It. Oh, sorry. Doesn't <laughs> the water I'm say I'm for uh, Valis' character? I'm that sheet here. Give me one second here. That is a, going to be... The spell does not normally have a saving. No, it doesn't. That's right. Give me one second here. Get the, 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 the magic. Okay. Um, oh, it's... Does the anti-magic negate the anti-magic and open up a world? What is your, DC, what is your spell casting DC? <laughs> a portal. <laughs> Fifteen. With a 16, it succeeds by one, and it rattles and almost falls apart, but manages to stay up. Okay. And for a second time, Valus, you almost dispelled this entire creature, but not quite. Oh man. It's like putting a bag of folding in a bag of folding. 
Is this creature looking at anyone or look like it's going to be heading towards anyone? It's just kind of lumbering straight through these bushes very slowly at all of you. Okay. In that case, I'll just stand here. Okay, you do so. And I end turn. That is your turn, uh, Ballast. That brings us to the hollow armor. And so with you directly in front of it, it's still really slow. It goes straight through these bushes. And so that's where it will get. And then with its dash. Damn, that's crazy. And uh, that's action. He doesn't have a bonus action, so that's what he does. He just right up next to you. He blocks a little bit of the light from you, and you just kind of see this dark figure right over top. But that's all that he can do. And that brings us to Minka. Mm -hmm. Minka, there is only one suit of armor left, and it looms over Valis. What do you want to do? So Minka is going to um, scoot towards Ori to get a clearer shot to reduce the chance of killing Valis. Yeah. 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 Um, And and as she passes um, Billy, she's going to use her action um, to look at Billy and be like, do you want magical rocks to throw? <laughs> Kara finds this very cute. Very <laughs> I want you to, to know this before I say what Billy says, yeah, which yeah. is... No. <laughs> okay. And then she's going to keep going use her bonus action to shoot the guy. <laughs> Go ahead and use your bonus action to shoot the guy. Uh, that is a total of 22. 22? 22 hits? Uh, for nine points of radiant damage. Nine points of radiant damage. For just a second, Billy, you watch as the creature shakes with this rock and you're like, did Minka just kill this with the rock she offered me? But no, not even close. This thing just kind of right back down. Still very much up. Anything else, Minka? So that my, so my action, my bonus action, my movement, I'm done. There you go. This is the top of the round. And to Alina. Alina, you catch this kind of blurb from Minka as she runs by. What do you want to do? Okay. Alina is going to say to Ori... Billy needs this. <laughs> and then, her using her move action, she's gonna come over to Finn, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> say to Finn, <laughs> "Billy needs this." Chill <laughs> out. Make a persuasion check for free. <laughs> um, twenty-eight. <laughs> Uh, all right. How stealthy okay, is Alina kind of being t- with this? She's, <laughs> she's whispering. You see, because she's the sort of, and Billy, as you watch Alina, you watch as Alina says something to Finn, and Finn looks kind of weirdly <laughs> over at you, and then she eats his sword. What it for. <laughs> Alina's passive perception is 20. Does she hear it? No, you don't hear it Thank at this God. distance, but yeah. You well, see something she hear it. Yeah, okay, when so, um, said, and so what Billy, Alina's uh, doing Ori. is she's going to go, she's playing it cool, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so she's going to, pretend to cast a spell that fizzles and sure. be like, oh man, <sighs> like no she was problem. trying to get a better angle and then it just fizzles and she's like. <laughs> Make a performance check. <laughs> <laughs> These are my two best skills. Um, 18. Billy, there's a lot happening and you can't really tell what's going on, but maybe Alina misses with a spell, something goes on. Yeah. And you're really she focusing on the Alice. fact you're really focusing on the fact that Finn just killed one of these things with the hilt of a sword, yeah. and that really bums you out. But that is uh, your turn, Alina. Um, still have an action. I think I've done enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you are the unbattlefield general. That brings us to Ori. <laughs> Billy, do you really you you just want to kill it? Is that such a big deal? <laughs> <laughs> Steady aim. <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> Minka on the other side of Ori just cringes. Yeah. <laughs> so much cringing. You have a passive of 26. You feel the cringing happening all around you. Of course, uh, Valis isn't getting any of this, so Valis probably is just going to be like, bah! Oh, yeah. but Billy gets to go for Valis. It's yours. <laughs> free action. You lower your weapons. <laughs> Billy, free action, withering gaze. Like, I don't want it to be like a pity kill. I don't know if it was... Does uh does Billy want the pity kill? Billy doesn't know quite yet that it's a pity kill, but now she does. Sorry, <laughs> 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 I'm gonna shoot it. Okay, <laughs> get a I don't want to make Billy feel even worse. Olive gave us a wheel and said, "Kiss someone." Is that what is supposed to happen? I don't know. 
You're gonna go run upstairs and No, no, no. There's, there's a husband right there. <laughs> Easy. I don't know why I thought she um, would have to run what, upstairs. Go up and, and run upstairs and 20. kiss all of them. Dirty 20. With my dirty husband 20. downstairs. Okay. Uh -oh. You can kiss Chase. With you a dirty 20, you are able to hit. Go ahead and roll true. damage. <laughs> Billy, you watch as Ori sinks a shot on this creature. I won't use the. <laughs> I'll use the I won't try my hardest. Don't worry, yeah, Billy. if he says the more you say, the more you talk, the more Billy's gonna no, kill you in your no sleep. Bonus, no bonus. I feel like um. Can I drop my really weapon to not give him sneak like, attack? <laughs> Lena had a pretty decent turn of like handing it to Billy. Coolly, or, or he ruined it. Yeah, he messed it up. I'm, so, I'm just set, I'm loosening the lid for you. <laughs> it is barely hey. still up. I personally would have loved it to go over. <laughs> But in the interest of fairness, it still has a little bit of health. Trip attack! <laughs> You're doing it! <laughs> Up to you. I can't tell you what to do. Can be no, added I don't after wanna... the attack. We just had a good moment. I don't want to... <laughs> I'm right on the cusp of like... This is Ori not a pity, <laughs> Not a pity kill, Ori but... Uh, it's like a bro, know. like a bro move. Yeah. yeah. I loosened okay. the jar for you. <laughs> sure. I'll let you open the lid. All right. Free action Sorry, condescension. That brings that? us to Finn. <laughs> no. Finn, just thinking. She's a sword. Kind of looks at you, Alina, and just says, you know, you guys are weird, but I appreciate <laughs> the friendship. It's kind of like... And he just kind of like looks. He's doing no effort whatsoever to hide the fact that he's like not doing anything, but he's mm -hmm. at the very least standing down. Okay. That is Finn's turn. And that brings us to Billy. Killy. You got this. Oh, dang. I couldn't kill it. Oh my God. <laughs> so okay. in a brief moment, like, you see I'm a leader who goes and pieces the spell. And Ori goes, oh no, I couldn't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Billy. Did you miss two shots? Oh no, Billy. No, I think he's attacking Ori. <laughs> so you've said before that a 17 doesn't hit. It does not. It still doesn't. What about now? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Oh, Much like Ori before you and Alina before him, you are unable to get this killing blow. Oh no. You're all trying your hardest, but it's still not going down. That is your turn, Billy. Anything else? This thing's just too powerful for us. Oh my God. Certainly, that is why. <laughs> Traveling bards. <laughs> that brings us to you. <laughs> Can it be a bonus action to just. <laughs> yeah, sure. Reaction smack Ori across the head. Another bro moment. <laughs> Excuse me. That There's no damage, it's just. <laughs> Valis. Valis. There's a commotion behind you, but you don't catch much of what's going on. This creature right in front of you. What do you want to do? Follow Slay your heart. the demon. Follow your heart, Valus. I like to say to it, "Hey, suit of armor, any chance that we could be friends and you could be my armor?" You can see the sword, and it feels like that's a strong no. Okay, I'll take the dodge action. Okay. Phenomenal. I've been waiting for him to dodge armor. So you that's hold all the way sword, there, and where you hold your shield and you ready the dodge action. That is your turn, Valis. That brings us to the hollow armor. Can Billy, that... as a free action, just make an insight check on who is just being a fucking dick at this point and letting, making it a pity kill? No, it's becoming really, really apparent with no check required. Billy just is... sheets her sword. <laughs> uh, this armor takes two attacks against Valis. Oh, it doesn't try, I would it doesn't like try to hurt Billy me. to have Oh, no, to it will try to hurt you, sorry. Oh. I, is, yeah. Does she think it's Ori? Does she you. think it's Alina? Because that's going to damage things. Is a 26 to hit? Or is the only one who's being that weird hits. about it. Okay. So the armor <laughs> open and it <laughs> around you. You are considered restrained. Your You're proficient in heavy armor. Bad. And so though this is uncomfortable and you can feel the rings like pulling at you and moving and that's not great, you can still cast magic. Please. Do I still have agency over my hands and legs and stuff? <laughs> to a degree, but okay. you imagine you're competing against something else to move. So oh, you might did move. it roll a disadvantage? I did, yes. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Yes, I know. Um, I rolled a 17 <laughs> and 18. Uh, that is, however, all that it... Oh, no, because you didn't have to move. So, multi-attack, and it is going to use guilt. Valis. Does a <laughs> 24 <laughs> hit? Um, what's my armor? <laughs> Your armor right now is 18 plus shield. Tallies. 19. Is it is it 18 plus shield? So it'll be a okay, it 21. 21. So I guess it does it. There you go, Valis. Wait, was that a disadvantage? Yes. 
Um, everything <laughs> is a disadvantage right now. So you are encased in new armor? Yes, I have armor now. Hey. Hey. I have, I have yeah. better armor. <laughs> Technically, yes. Um, <laughs> Valis, you are taking... 73 points. <laughs> <laughs> 50 points of slash. Oh, shit. Oh, that was on all the I'm sorry. That was closer 50? than I anticipated. Within this armor, the plates you can feel pulling you almost like an octopus, and then abruptly they shift, and you feel the edges I of was each joking. of these maybe 200 individual discs just slash across parts of your body, oh. and you just bleed down the majority of the front. It is uh, beginning to carve up and incorporate you into its being. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That is oh. Gurdon Guild, and that is all the hollow armor can do. That brings us to Minka. <laughs> um, Minka uh, was going to use her passive uh, insight to Back. try to figure out uh, what the best next move would be, but then seeing the blood sort of seep out of the armor, she has decided also, there are other Ballas things. Screams. <laughs> yeah, there are other more important Ballas things to deal scream. with right now. Um, this is my new armor. Oh, cool, guys. <laughs> it's a big snug. So, I just need um, to break it in. Makes me really lightheaded. She's gonna go. Oh no, no, and like just rush forward. Um, <laughs> and and maybe no, seeing Alita had stuck her fingers into the eye holes to touch Billy. I did do that. I see where this is going. She's gonna do the same thing <laughs> to touch Ballas. Okay. <laughs> um, except she's gonna is it a cast cure wound? <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna save you, but we're gonna make you feel a little bit better. As you, so you make you make a rush towards you, the overwhelming, blinding light of the celestial energy, and then you truly go blind as you are pushing the eyes. <laughs> But it feels great. And all of a sudden, within the armor, worse. you feel far, far less wounded. Uh, well, far less wounded. Worse. She's going to cast it at the second level. So uh, just less wounded. Less wounded. Um, just prolonging the I'm going to just roll like, like absolute fight. dog shit for the entire night, unfortunately. You want to join my health? <laughs> uh, she has eight points of healing, which okay. was far less than she desired to do. And your fingers are in the visor of this Valus eating armor. Yep. Um, and as with her bonus action, because that was her action, um, she's going to infuse uh, magic stones. <laughs> okay, no problem. Because <laughs> she can't, she doesn't want to directly attack the armor with Valus inside. No of problem. Her. You reach into your pocket, you grab these stones, and pulling them out, though a little bit bloodied, you do have these magic stones in hand. Um, and then she's just gonna uh, be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and that, being uncertain is a free action. <laughs> that is your turn. That brings us to Alina. Alina, so Finn turns to you, and this is a free action. He goes, so like, um, are they are they gonna do something about that? <laughs> oh my god, this is this is so so Minka. His hands back on his sword. He's like, <laughs> Minka is next to the armor. Uh -huh. Yep. So if I do a thunder step, I'm going to hit Minka. Yeah. It's fine. So no. Um, um, Minka has health. Well, Alina knows that she's seen Valis faced up places before. Um, what you doing, Alina? <laughs> She's gonna go and thunderstep. All right. So you whoosh, fly down and Wait, seeing. Im importantly, yes. have you taken your fingers out? Oh, yeah. right, because you're holding the stones. I'm yes, holding stones, stones in my, okay. glowing stones in my hands, not sure what to do. Alina's gonna go around this side, but yeah, it's with and So, it. Valis, you blink this out of your so. eyes. You're like, oh man, I feel a little bit better. And then you see Alina flying, and you're like, no, 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 no. And right in the eyes again. And. <laughs> The thunder step follows, and you are burst from out of the space. The con save, DC yep. 18. Where are you going? So, um, point of we'll order. Back here again. Since it happens, what what point does the thunder damage happen? Does it happen after it gets teleported away? Like yes. it yes. like the, It happens. Teleport, uh, then damage. It's, okay. It's like the um. The, the <laughs> bless you. So she doesn't get my plus three. That was the question. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I rolled a natural twenty anyway, so Yay. it doesn't matter. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have pretty good con save anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's good. con. Uh, for what it's worth, it only rolls an eleven, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, not terribly constituted here. How much damage is that? 24 points of thunder damage 
to the failure and um, only 12 to my friend <laughs> and our own, well, our, our main healer. Alina, tell us how it happened. Oh, um, <laughs> Alina. So actually, okay, so it's going to be like this. She bamps away with, with Valis here, and so she's next to Billy, and she watches the armor, like, crumble and fall apart from the spell, and she looks at Billy, at Billy and is just like, <laughs> the sword is in its sheath. <laughs> and Alina's just going to be like, right. I'm sorry. It's uh, pretty bad luck right there. Yeah. Ori, please stop talking. And <clears throat> as that <laughs> suit just rattles down, you all become aware of the fact that there is this kind of rattling occurring within the grass and the plants here. And these suits will eventually reassemble themselves. Um, Valis, that puts it in your mind that these may not be the best armor to wear. Depending on how, how much you might depending on one's purpose. Do you yes. still want it? <laughs> <laughs> we should, we should no, go. that Billy really, is just really hurt. stomping off along the path. <laughs> we, should, really we should go. Stomps. Is there anything that we can do to prevent these from being a danger to others in the future? Uh, put them under some rocks so that they can't reform. Um, I cast. I'm oh, sorry. Were you about to do something? No. I cast animate objects. Oh my okay. god! And pick up a bunch of big rocks and no put problem. them on the armor. <laughs> so oh, using you the the kind of charm off of the prayer bead, you crush it in your hand and you animate huge chunks of stone. This one. And you move all of these beings underneath and just as much as you can. And I mean, it's a huge stone. It would be it would be very hard to move, and this is probably pretty effective for this purpose. That was a good idea, Ori. Thanks. Uh, uh, sometimes the most simple one. <laughs> <laughs> so as Billy stalks away, Billy, you do see rising up in the distance these kind of hills that eventually lead up into the mountains proper, and you can see the beginnings of tracks that kind of glint up in, in near the top. It's getting kind of late, and so you are all probably thinking about a short rest within the next three hours or so if you want to not take a... Uh, exhaustion check, but you'll reach this station within an hour. Um, However, it is nine o'clock, mm -hmm. so we'll step away for a quick break, and we will be right back uh, in ten minutes. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
And welcome back. To those of you who have joined us from this place, we will have everybody back in just a moment, but we're playing TNT. And so we will go right ahead and jump back in. Oh, Matt, joining us. Oh, Hello. It said 10 seconds up there, and I was trying to run because we were... we've been playing this since 2019. There's a delay on this stream. <laughs> I don't know how many times I could possibly in, in say my that. Brain. Sorry, there was cake up there. <laughs> It's Wednesday cake. I wasn't no. even getting oh, the cake. I was cake. just... Anyways. Uh, we are jumping right back into D&D. And so for all of you, you have defeated the hollow armor. There are still parts of it ringing out underneath this huge rock that Valis has placed on it. I do want to say also Talon in the chat had a great, very civically responsible idea to deal with the armor. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but uh, all of you have made your way away from this place. And now Billy especially... Mm -hmm kind of stalking ahead of the group, having not been able to score a kill in this battle. We're ever We're, yeah, Do not talent. Are we mobsters now? <laughs> um, I mean, but that's like... the beetle train does kind of loom up before you, and Some you, steps. I would say probably none of you really know much about the station proper, but it doesn't appear to be, at least on this face of the mountain, uh, if it is, in fact, at the kind of ground level at all. The stone path does lead to a little dirt trail <clears throat> that begins to go up and through the foothills proper. And uh, Billy, make a perception check as you are in the lead. <clears throat> uh, 22. Okay. So you walk for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then you're able to start discerning some shapes up on the hills. Up in them, there hills. Them, there hills. There is a constructed pathway. You can see places hills. that have been cleared in the stone <laughs> itself to make a relatively if somewhat steep uh, kind of path that rises up. And there are like bridges that have been built, although very small and relatively simplistic. Billy burns them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> very wandering hearts of you. Mm. There are people too. And you can see they're kind of at first Billy just moving <laughs> shapes. But uh, here and there, there are people that seem a little bit stuck kind of on this path as a number of people are currently like clearing things away. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> at the very foot, as you get a little bit closer still, there is a queue that is built up. It's not terribly long, maybe 13, 14 people kind of gathered around the base of this place, mm -hmm. but all kind of looking up and um, waiting. And there is broken glass everywhere. Even from a good distance, you can see little shimmers in the grass and across much of the stone. Um, Billy joins the queue and pretends <clears throat> that she is alone. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk up to the queue. Are you guys, is anybody doing anything before you reach this point? How far is it? So We said like an hour? No, so if oh. you're walking straight over there, it's like, yeah, it's like an hour total walk. Mm -hmm. Billy sees this kind of happen about halfway through. And then is there anything that you want to do in the remaining half hour before Billy gets into the queue? Is there the uh, sign <clears throat> of... Uh like the potion accident that they mentioned the broken glass is probably that sign that's it do people it's a look lot like... of broken glass oh okay is anyone like cleaning it up yeah okay. you can see there's a couple of dwarves that all seem to be relatively similarly dressed and so you get the sense that they are probably some kind of outfit that are doing this they're all dressed as warriors and so probably not their initial job do we do i recognize the make a perception like, check symbology on the <clears throat> uniforms Twenty-six. Twenty-six. So the twenty-six, as you look, you can see what looks like a um, cloud that has been cleft in half by an axe, and you recognize the sigil of House Shattersky or Clan Shattersky. It's a dwarvish clan. They are the ones who are typically responsible for this station, and most of them wear that. There is one who wears what looks like a little bit more of like a priestly attire. They have darker hair, and they're actually at the very top of the structure with a couple more people kind of looking down at everything else that's happening. And you get the air of authority about them, probably an officer of some kind within this group. Okay. But What's this station called again? I'm sorry. South Sentinel South Station. Sentinel Thank station. You. I cast Lay on Hands and Harness Divine Power on myself. Okay. Some just spell administrator. I'll just about take it. a short <laughs> rest if we're waiting in this line. Okay, so you're walking all the way up to the line. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get in the line too, but I'm keeping a respectful distance from Billy. <laughs> Got my traveler's cloak over dirt to be more discreet. Um, Minka would approach one of the soldiers that are like trying to clean up and be like, um. Is there anything we could do to help? Oh, uh, respectfully, it's very dangerous around here with the broken glass. Stay back, please. 
Uh, we'll clean this up with magic and the like very soon. Okay. Mm. Um, you don't mind me asking, what what happened? The the he turns and kind of gestures, and it's it, you get the sense that it is kind of absurd to ask because as you look, mm-hmm. would a visual perspective be helpful? Sure. Yeah. Or visual perspectives. Mm. Remember, we were we um, learned that not every visual perspective means a battle. Sorry. But so with, Billy, with Billy around, this one might, honestly. Yeah, technically, Billy's looking for a fight. Technically, we have learned that every visual perspective is a battle. But the fight is might maybe now with minis. Emotional. <laughs> Emotional. Yes. Oh. This cake is really good. I'm really thinking. Everything is emotional damage. Emotional damage. When Billy is around, absolutely. So many damage. This is large. Oh. Is it in charge? Are is it getting, large? It might be. Are we getting beetle train action? Oh my god, because... <laughs> oh, that is large. Whoa! Oh. That is a large collection. So these are really just the foothills and the entrance kind of wrapping up oh towards the stage yeah, of proper. Oh my god. There is a huge path that wraps up the mountain, and this is really just the entrance way. Oh, this is so good. Oh, okay. it's so cool. I say this a lot, but it, I mean, truly, you have wow. on yourself. Look at it how good so it is. Cool. Look at all these guys. As you will notice, too, cool dude. all around the place, the reason that it's such a ridiculous question, there are broken bits of glass all around in mm. bottles as well that kind of uh, mark that area. Is the culprit anywhere to be seen? Like, do we see the mountain? <laughs> Does it, yeah, are they check. Him help? And so like, at the moment, models? you are all kind of around where those horse and carriages and that There's kind of cue models. right there. Yeah, all the little uh, 19. Oh, look at him go. Uh, 19. And you can see the encounter map right up here on your screen, but in much greater detail at Albron RPG at some point next week. Because we're taking pictures. Look at us go. Oh, look at that. I got a 19. Do I see this idiot? With the 19, you gaze across and you see a couple of things. First of all, you see right off to your right, this whole like horse-drawn carriage. The horses are hanging out there and you're not sure how they're gonna get up because that path looks a little narrow for that. They have a bunch of wooden barrels and crates, probably not them, and they look annoyed. <clears throat> your gaze goes up. And as you go along this path, you see there are stalls that are set up to sell food and drinks along this way. There's like a little shopping scene set up here. There are people paused at every station, very annoyed and waiting for this cleanup to happen. There is broken glass all along all of these pathways that are still kind of shimmering, and it's being carefully gathered up. It's not just being pushed off to the side. This is still very valuable material. Um, And with the 19, I mean, you can really see everything that you see in front of you. There is at the very top, what looks like a little kind of check-in point, and there are a few soldiers there. You can see the dwarves who are clad in armor. but yeah, that's what you see with the 13. You don't see any uh, particular culprit. Is this guy meant to be lying down? No, he's sta- yeah. everybody, everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. He just got pushed um, over. Okay. Um, is the line, like, moving? No. Okay. And so very much, and as you're kind of there, and, and Mink is talking to this guard, the guard is talking about there being a delay and really just to wait until everything's cleaned up. And so, I mean, nobody seems to be moving. You see people who are like sitting and have really sort of set up little um, wait areas. This is a standing traffic jam right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alina's going to go up next to Minka to the guard that she's talking to. And um, Alina's going to be like, so should we come back tomorrow? Like, when should we come back? The guard kind of stops and he has his bag of broken glass and it into the sand, into the uh, grass. And he just says, you know, we don't have broken glass all the time here, so I don't know how oh, long it's going to take. Oh, I get it. You're doing really good work. I, I just, I mean, we want to, we're not going to stand here in line. We'll go and camp and come back. And I just, you know. Truth for that, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. So, um, so it's not, you're not really sure, like, when things are going to be opened up again? Nope. Okay. But maybe we'll check what's, back in the morning. What's... Hypothetically, if we could fly over, would would that be an issue if we were to just make... If we could fly. No, no. I mean, why are you taking the train if you can fly? The train's faster. So then, I guess if you want to go fast, wait, which is weird. And if you want to go slow, go. I don't know. I have work to do. You're and a he gets poet, back down, man. And he just starts, like, scooping glass back up. Okay, well... Part one of the plan has been executed. Should we go find a place to camp and forage, Billy? You want to forage? Is it up here? Uh-huh. 
<laughs> How far up do we see? Like, is it just everyone's just cleaning this mess up? No, most people are just kind of waiting, and you can see exactly three dwarves <clears throat> who are doing all of the cleaning. You see two. One is in front of one of the stalls right now. One is on the other side of that wooden platform. And the third one, way, 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 way back, all, all the way towards the front, seems to be tackling it from the other end. And the fact that they are both on opposite ends of this path means that they probably have a long way to go if they're meeting in the middle. Billy casts Mending on one of the sh like collections of shards to see what that does. <laughs> like three of them clink, clink, clink into place and the rest just kind of rattle around as they don't really fit together. And the dwarf turns and just goes, yeah, no, we tried that. Um, when they all mix together, it gets a little bit harder. <sighs> and he just kind of takes some of the pieces away from you and pushes them into his bag. What was it? Boop. Bag, because I want to help, but they Boop. you said you didn't need any help. Boop. <laughs> you, you just keep doing it every now and then. It just kind of clinks together, but, you know, it's little pieces. Um, well? So how long are we going to... Well, why don't we go camp and come back in the morning and, and see how it's going? <clears throat> yeah. There are merchants here in line, maybe? Oh, you said there's oh. stalls, right? Yeah, you can I mean, see two stalls, and there are people here who are bringing goods quite often, and so there are surely merchants amongst this group. But the ones that you can see, there seems to be kind of like a food stand that is at the closest to the foot. And oh, so we can still go up here. You're not supposed to, uh, but like, <laughs> there's only six feet of distance, and so there's really not a lot stopping you. There's only one guy, and he's eating. It's a dwarf. He's working, technically. Um Nobody else is up there, and so you get the sense that probably you're not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing physically bar barring you from doing so. Mm. So it's like, we could shop here, but now's not the time. Probably. Um, Mingo will look at like the people also waiting in line, and just like, um, see if there's like one that looks friendly. Sure. <laughs> Most people seem pretty grumpy, but out of that group, yeah, there's a furbolg there, and furbolgs, as they go, tend to have pretty, pretty easygoing demeanors. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, they're just kind of looking, and every now and then, they just kind of, <sighs> and he just like seems more exasperated than anything. Mm -hmm. um, but probably the closest to friendly in this annoying situation. Mm -hmm. So I think she could probably approach the furbolg and be like, "Um, I'm so sorry to bother you. Mm -hmm. Um, did you happen to see what happened here?" Besides just the potions everywhere. Who's, who's transporting the potions? I feel like I get everywhere. I mean, they're everywhere. It was pretty funny, actually, except for the traffic jam. But um, it started rolling when part of the rope snapped. And somebody tried to stop it. And you can see he points up mm -hmm. towards the second stall. And they grabbed one of the handles and kind of swung it around down the other path, and the handle broke, and then it kept going down that way. Oh. And it hit one of the dwarves off that rock. It jumped that second bridge, but then it crashed down there, and there's just glass everywhere. Oh. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. What were they transporting? <laughs> glass, I guess. Oh, just uh, glass? What was in the glass? I don't know. Huh. Oh, I didn't was, seem like anything. Was the dwarf okay? Hey! And he mm -hmm. kind of calls out, and the dwarf turns, and same dwarf that you called over oh. to. And yeah. he just goes, <sighs> What? And he looks at you, and the furball just turns and points to you and goes, Ask him. Oh, I'm sorry. I just heard you got hit by the cart. I wasn't sure. So it's... you're going to make fun of me now, too? No, I I just know healing magic, and I didn't know if he'd needed some. <laughs> he puts the bag down, and he walks over, and he stands, trying to look really tough, but he's about two and a half feet tall, shorter than you are. Mm -hmm. And so looking up at you, he says, What's your name? Minka? Minka what? Uh, Rockholz? Just... Minka's fine. <laughs> Minka, this is going to be an expensive journey for you. Oh, I'm sorry. And he turns around and he leaves his bag of glass and begins to crunch up the path. What? Are you sure you <gasps> don't want? Wait. <laughs> uh, what just happened? I... Wait, <laughs> come back. I think Pick a persuasion check at disadvantage. <laughs> Maybe when you unnecessarily pity someone, it gets them angry. Uh, <clears throat> they don't seem to hear you. Uh, hey, um, okay. I you had you you've got a good heart, Minka. Let's go camp. Huh. I can cast disguise magic on you later. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty blue. Oh, but that's okay. It's a good spell. Anyway, um, anything we can do to cheer you up? I no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he's gonna go join his friend up here. We're 
Okay. Well, now there's no one blocking us, right? There's one more dwarf. You can see this guy who was okay. standing in the middle platform. But now there's no dwarf at the bottom cleaning it up. Correct. You have slowed this process oh. down. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> what if I... Hmm. Oh, boy. Bah. <laughs> well, um, I, I guess the next question was, um, if where are you traveling to? The furball turns to you and just says, we're going to Darkbriar. There's a lot of opportunities now. A lot of real estate's opening up, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. The last thing I heard was that there was a lot of negative like, commotion and collapses and stuff happening up there. Did that change? Mm, probably not, but I'm not going to go into the mines. That's mm, crazy. Fair. Who would live underground? Fair. Man, this is taking a long time. Where'd that dwarf go? And you can see he kind of stands up and begins to look around. Mm -hmm. And uh, you now you can actually hear there is a bit of a commotion happening. Mm -hmm. And it's moans and people saying, there's only one of them now. And again, like the people are beginning to get a little riled up. Um, there's a noticeable delay happening in this already slow cleaning process. I'm gonna... I'm gonna start I'm... picking up glass. Okay. I'm I eyeing this, gonna... this bite over here. You put a bite on the... <sighs> That's because there's a bird. No. You could see up in that distance, or with your passive perception of 26, mm -hmm. what looks like some kind of a hawk. You can't see the tail. You can't really see the beak so much because it's kind of behind these rocks. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be tending perhaps to a nest. Mm. Billy's just casting mendings all around. <laughs> Alina is um, using Mage Hand to pick up glass so she doesn't cut herself. No and problem. Is there like a, a sack lying around? Did he put his sack down? <laughs> yeah, and there's All right, glass I'm going to start there. putting more glass into the sack. No problem. You begin uh, to put glass into the sack, but people are upset. And there is a dwarf who's not working here. You can see, uh, not dressed like any of the others. He's wearing like merchant's clothes. Mm -hmm. And he seems really upset. And as you're picking up glass, he looks down next to you and he goes, good idea. And he picks up a bottle and just goes, hey, <gasps> no, fuck no, you. No, and he no, no, no. wings it up. And you watch as it goes end over end over end. And off far in that distance, one of those dwarfs just drops. Oh, shit. And uh, actually... Because he's right on the edge there. Are we rolling? You watch as he just slides down this mountain. Oh, no. And gets wedged in this crevasse. Oof. Oh, my God. He's down there. Oh, oh boy. Oh, no. Was that the same dwarf that I actually upset deeply? <laughs> and almost ominously, there is a <laughs> of thunder that falls in that wake. Uh, and that dwarf just goes, oh, shit, and just, like, slinks back into the group. The guy that threw it? Yeah. And, Billy, uh, minor illusions. Alina, you are just standing there. <laughs> the other dwarf is looking around and Going just locks eyes with you. Billy, illu minor illusions, a big arrow just pointing at the dwarf. <laughs> okay. okay. And the dwarf is just kind of... Filling the role of Cheshire tonight is... <laughs> And um, the dwarf just immediately moves behind the fur bug, who is just like, no, and just gets up and moves away. He's just right there, this arrow pointing down at him. The other dwarf, like, glares. And uh, a couple of things are happening all at once here. First of all, this process has slowed down. And so you are kind of intending to camp. Probably a good idea at this point, as things are certainly slower. But there's also a noticeable commotion happening behind you. And part of that is because there's all of this going on, but another part of it is because there are other figures that are approaching. And um, I would say, Valis, you being kind of closest to the back at this point, uh, get a sense for them first. There's four figures and they would stop probably uh, roughly around where Finn is there on the map. So with all of you, mm -hmm. Finn's coming over here for this little adventure. This guy has already joined the queue with his horse. They come four guys. Horse this was four guys. Four specific guys. Oh, what's up, guys? Don't oh, worry. Guys. Uh oh. They're what? dressed in armor, or not armor, but robes. Horns. Oh. Uh oh. 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 Those... Magic bandits. Magic bandits. Valis, you're the only one that's kind of noticed this so far as they kind of are walking up and there's this commotion, but you feel this before you really see it. It's colder around them. And as you turn, you can see the thing that really stands out to you about these individuals is that they have badges that kind of mirror your own. They do not have the sign of the four seasons on them. There is instead upon these a golden hand, like a fist that is clutched around a... Give me one second here. I've gone past where I was a minute. Crap. 
I just like that our presence accidentally just makes things worse. Uh, always. always. <laughs> are we? Yeah, it's we to be like that sometimes. Are we just cursed? But now we're going to beat up these guys. Now it's gonna I remember the fun. golden on hand. On each of the four knuckles on this <clears throat> hand, you can see what looks like a different size star. Um, very small, uh, four pointed. Excuse me. Um, that either pin cloaks or robes together on their bodies. There is no matching color here, but the robes are all very fine. You can see at least two of them carry what look like magic stabs. These are certainly magic users, and kind of as they're there, and Valus, you turn to look. Um, are you doing anything? Do they look menacing? Like, do they look like they're like bandits Host- or hostile. something? Make a insight check. Are they magic bandits? I, I've heard of the golden hand before. Make a history check. You've never heard of a group called the Golden Hand. Well, because that doesn't exist. No, no, no. But I've heard of this uh, this sigil Six, sixteen. Before, I think. Sixteen. As you look at them, Valis, it's not menacing. There is something akin to the way that you feel. Uh, as you look at them, there's determination in their eyes. And these are individuals that definitely follow some kind of a code. There's a similarity to your own kind of oath, although a little bit different in that they're clearly not paladins. But you look at this symbol and there is a, there's a little bit of a power to it that doesn't immediately set you as these are bad people. But when you look at this determination, you are reminded of people who are convinced that they are right about something and will not back down about it. And this determination is not kind determination. This is not the kind of determination like we will get to this train on time. This is the kind of determination that there is a wrong that needs to be righted. And though it's not immediately malevolent, there is some aggression there. These are adventurers that have their shit together. (laughs) Have I noticed them at this point? I would say as like Valis kind of notices them uh, as part of like your party, Mm -hmm. you notice when your different members kind of shift and turn. And so, yeah, you definitely begin to notice that this group is here. Okay, so... What was your check? Uh, 13. 13. The golden hand. No, it's the sigil. <sighs> the golden hand. It would be a mercenary it's company. It might like be a, a religious yeah. group. Hard uh, to tell. Um, okay, so given that this situation so is already a very short fused <laughs> time bomb, uh, noticing that these very determined looking people have walked up, Alina's gonna just try so hard to not cause it to burst more. So she's gonna turn and be like, fellow travelers, look at look at this mess. There was like some sort of potion cart accident. It's They told us it's gonna be a while. Um, where are y'all headed? The only one that even turns to look at you is the elf who is kind of standing there, like cream colored robes. Uh, they look at you for just a moment and then look away and kind of glance back. But then they turn and they say, we're heading to Darkbriar. Um, oh. M- Indirectly. Uh, you what? should probably walk away. No, and he I, turns uh... and kind of looks and just says, if we get all of them right now, I bet we cannot hurt a single one of these civilians. And the other one turns and kind of nods. And they begin to go in two pairs off into the sides. Alina says, I don't think I will walk away. It sounds like you're intending to hurt people. They all stop. And they are going to stop in these positions, which is probably important. So everybody go ahead and place yourselves. Oh boy. Uh, well, where's the fur bowl? Valus, are you doing says, anything? I'm sorry. Um, um, let's I've, see. I've been able to see what's been said with my observance, right? Yeah, but you're also not really I'm far like right away. Now. I mean, that's... You yeah. also heard away. with your ears. Cool, okay. Ears. I'm just ears for, okay. ear for, ear for I wasn't sure if it was sound. like a <laughs> no. low, low murmur. No, and, and for what it's worth, that's almost even worse because okay, the fact yeah. that they're doing nothing to hide this... I'm going to yell... Bandits. <laughs> okay. nice. And then I'm going to cast Blast. <laughs> so uh, you yell bandits. And at that exact moment, you can see like people are turning. There's already a lot of yelling happen. And so things kind of slow down. You can see the guards turn. And 
At first, in slow motion, it's like they disregard you. The eyes go back to this person who's like yelling in their face, these two dwarves like right at each other. But the eyes look up again and you see recognition in this moment. They know who this is and it causes them fear. It causes who fear? The dwarf, this guard. Now it is 930. We're getting pretty close to the end here. And this is not a short combat. So I think in the interest of time, what makes the most sense is that we end here for the evening. And next week, we start by rolling for initiative, because I think this is going to be a little bit of a more intense combat. Mm. But you all made it through the um, Valley of uh, the DM. <laughs> the fray. You've made your way across a pretty difficult stretch of terrain without any kind of magical mishaps. And so <laughs> a relative success, although a couple of missteps along the way. We'll be back next week for a little bit more D&D. But until then, please stay safe. Uh, we'll see you then. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.